Hey, this is Ahmed Zappa, and you're listening to Tom and Zeus on the Shout It Out Loud cast. In my opinion, the number one kiss podcast in the world. And if you don't like this show, then fuck you. Oh, boy. Here we go. Boy. <laughs> this is James Simmons. Put that cookie down. Kiss. Stop pressing the button. Star. Peter Simmons. Star. He's not what you would call a handsome man. Oh no, here come the kiss cards. Is that a positive thing? Okay. Alright. Gonna grab me a nice cold mellow yellow. Why? Why do that to the fan? Stop it. Why? Because you fuck them. That's what we're talking about. 617525. Hello, hey, what's up there, Kiss Army? Tom and Zeus in another episode of Shout It Out Loudcast. Episode 269, Serious XM's Keith Roth. Yeah, all right. My favorite Serious XM DJ, Ozzy's Boneyard and Hair Nation. Fun times with Keith. <laughs> super fun time, would you say? It's a super terrific, happy fun hour with Keith Roth. Wow. Yep. Yep. Uh, I know you, he, you're a huge fan of his in Sirius Satellite. So I, we, uh, we're excited to have him and it's going to be a lot of fun talking with him, all sorts of subject matters. So yes, we cover it all. Good times. Yep. It's a nice, good, long conversation. So let's get into last week's episode. As we normally do, we take us, uh, a look at, uh, what we discussed last week and get uh, feedback. Last week we did the ARC new album song madness tournament preview that we always do. And this one's a little different because it wasn't really a kiss specific topic, but that is the March madness is from shout it out loud gas. So go ahead, buddy. Tell us about yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. So every year we do March Madness. This this year got started a little bit late just because of our lineup of great guests. We they take priority with scheduling, so it starts a little bit late. But uh, and of course, like Zeus said, it's ARC songs, no Kiss stuff. So we figured we kind of spread the love to all those albums that we've done. And as always, we do a poll. The poll is which of these songs is the best one who didn't make the poll. So we picked one from a couple of artists here. We picked King Nothing from Metallica, Find the River. From R.E.M., Mean Street from Van Halen, and New Sensation from In Excess. We know our audience, and of course, Mean Street crushed it, 54%. King Nothing at 17 New Sensation at 16 Find the River at 12 So bad. The rest of the three were pretty close. but Yeah, it's actually not bad at all. Van Halen stomped it. Yeah, Van Halen stomped it as usual. And by the time this episode drops, we will be knee-deep in the first round of the polls, which is pretty exciting. Uh, so we hope everybody got their brackets in in time so we can have some fun with this. Uh, hey, we'll wait a minute, Tom. Why is all the one kiss song forever in the brackets? Oh. Dude, that stupid fucking douchebag. <laughs> so I, I, so, th- so sh- I explain, I explained that to her. She goes, fuck it. Blah. I said, I said, no, no, no. That's forever by Y and T. There are no kiss songs. So she responded. So what you're saying is you picked a shitty song. <laughs> so I responded. I'm like, I'm like, you know what? You seem really fun. You should, you should contribute more with your knowledgeable and witty banter. You fucking douche. <laughs> I mean, really, just g- enough. Don't get me going. Don't get me going already on a rant. I can't do it. I can't handle it. I can't shit on some of these fucking people. I can't. I mean, they're just. <laughs> I can't do it. People just. It's the internet. <laughs> it's social media. Well, it's that combined with our zero. Patience tolerance level. People, hey, how do I submit this? I don't know. Fucking, we've explained it to people. It's on our episode. It's in the fucking actual picture. Yeah, you but, see, you're commenting which, on a fucking screenshot of it. Which reminds me of one of my favorite pieces of feedback. Our comment on Twitter, our, our buddy Andy, he commented strictly with a gif of a woman saying, stop yelling at me! Because <laughs> like, that's all we fucking do. Hey, here's my bracket. This was really tough. Dipshit, did you fucking really pick numbers in your bracket? 
You didn't do this. You really didn't do this, did you? Canceled. Out. Yeah, you're Thrown out. out. I didn't even out. look at it. Didn't All right. even look at it. <laughs> Anyways, let's get to a couple uh, comments here. Tennessee Duke, when Zeus referred to the Cinderella Tesla battle, he said, quote, one is less glammy than the other. I wonder which one he thinks is less. Tesla was never glammy, but by Cinderella's third album, they were almost straight blues. Okay, oh, well, Tennessee yeah. Duke, you answered your own question. It was Cinderella that we were referring uh, to. I know. I know. Dude, I know. it's called sarcasm. <laughs> Obviously, Cinderella was more glammy than Tesla on their debut albums. Right. Jesus Christ. For Christ's sake, Powell, it could be a fucking bartender. Oh, God. All right. Our buddy Tom Dust, who we have to give credit because, sorry, we're remiss at giving you credit for our amazing theme music, Tom Dust. His bracket was friggin' awesome. I'm not going to spoil what he picked, but I was very excited to see his bracket. We got a comment here from Aggie Dad and Tiger Grad. Fun brackets to fill out. As much as I love Billy Squire, he went against some heavy hitters. And as much as I dislike Rush, Tom Sawyer slays. That's the smartest thing you've ever said. And we got a comment here from Jerry Carey. He says, spoiler, Unchained wins every matchup by double digits until it gets to the final four. Then it defeats Crazy Train. Unchained is dominant in the championship regardless. I don't know. We're seeing, all, we're seeing a lot of bracket submissions. We, we said this when we, when we started this. It's going to be very interesting, but I am seeing... A lot of trending towards Van Halen and Ozzy. So it's going to be interesting. But that's what we got for Twitter, Zeus. Yeah, the feedback on this has been kind of, uh, uh, we're still getting it. And most of the feedback is basically people submitting their brackets. So right, right. it's not going to be much, and this will be really quick. Yep. So uh, we have Jason Ward in here, says that he loves the idea of us changing it up a bit. Yeah, we want to make it exciting. We want to want the same shit every fucking year. Guess what? Detroit Rock City won again. You know, come on. And guess what? We are, guess what? We already have next year's uh, already planned. And I credit to Zeus. We'll you'll find out a year from now what it is. But it, that should be pretty badass. Yeah, uh, Brad Rustleman. I thought this was a Kiss podcast. <laughs> Only Kiss Kiss songs. Lonely is the night. Modern day cowboy. Hard pass. I love. And that. he had a picture of that fucking stupid shit. Hey, you got everybody to fucking start posting shit about it. How do you, how is not, how is Land of the Lost not part of your childhood? I don't understand how you don't even know that. I, I remember what it was, but I didn't like it. It was stupid. I'd rather. Were you scared of the sleaze stacks? I don't, were, were you scared? The fact that you know that shit. Of course I know that. Jesus. George is getting upset. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, some of these brackets are fun and interesting, and some yeah. of these people that know how to enjoy themselves and get it. One of the things we saw with a lot of brackets, as usual, this this one probably more so, was picking to win the prize pack sponsored by Gene Simmons Moneybag, so was, or picking what you want, because that's obviously two very different things. We deal with that every year with the KISS brackets, but a lot of people like, I don't want this song to win, but I think it's going to win, so here's my bracket, you know? Ugh. Uh -oh. Just, I just, I, I can't do it. I can't <laughs> do it. I can't do it. Yes, hey, you can. How do, do I? It. How do I enter? I listened to the show. It wasn't clear. Do I just put my picks on? I'm not even gonna say his name because I don't want the guy to get. How pumped. could it not be clear? We spent like fucking twenty minutes with the directions. <laughs> now, if any of you are wondering why Zeus and I never pursued a yes. career in the education field, <laughs> imagine us being a classroom teacher. Dude, I coach, so that's something. You yeah, should, and you freaking like, yell at the kids and then take them to Hooters. <laughs> <laughs> you, you fucking scream at the kids and then take them to a strip bar. The the <laughs> the, the amount of fucking fucking shit I say, like, thank God some of the most parents don't hear it. Like, how fucking stupid do you have to be? Seriously, I've had stupid kids on this team before, but thank God you're running away with the prize this year, brother. Good luck. <laughs> Um. Anyways, Charles, don't call me Mark Eaton. Yeah, talk dirty me up against Monkey Biz. Nobody's fool takes on Kiss of Death. Smooth up Inya against Let's Go Crazy. Welcome to the Jungle versus Loving You's a dirty job. Ouch. Yep. The Boston and LA regionals were tough. I'm just sad that I have to push even flow and alive through the second round matchups due to the seating match mishaps. Seattle regional was weak with so much grunt not spread out over the three other three brackets. This was fun, 
already looking forward to next year's. Nice. Yep. All right. Over on Loudcasters, the great Bruce Foudy. Thanks, guys, for the huge shout-out. I'm proud to be a member of this crazy-ass group. Can't wait to send you guys my winning bracket by Carrier Pigeon like you guys requested. Yeah, nice. and Bruce and Bruce sent us a cool picture. You got to shout it out, Loudcast shirt. Check out his podcast, Hooked on Sonic. Thanks, Bruce, for the support, buddy. Yep, thank you. And then there's some more fucking. What do you call these people? Slesics. S- 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 Slesbians. <laughs> Slee stacks. Put up by Aaron Nirenberg. He put those up. Yep. Um, Joey, fucking miserable Ray Romano stubble. <laughs> Paint my jeans and then fucking iron them. Rom- Romanic. Is this the is this the comment where he bitches about the bracket? I don't know which one is it. It could be this one. It could be his email. It could be his text to us. It could be his fucking <laughs> post on Twitter or his fucking loudcasters post or his Facebook <laughs> post. Somewhere along this, one of those ones where he's bitching about something. Oh, what the fuck? Ah, what the <laughs> fuck happened to you? I don't know. But you turning into a miserable fuck. You know what happened to him? He's listening to us. That's what happened. Fucking used to be the comics. Next time I see your video up on fucking line about buying a house with fucking a a horseshoe fucking game in the backyard. (laughs) Hey, this is Joey Romanek. Do you like tire swings? (laughs) Check out this four quiet four bedroom back here. And they got. Kiss memorabilia in the backyard. I'm going to take photos of it and get and get my license revoked. Hey, Dad, how'd you like to go fishing? How would you like to sell real estate this weekend? I'm going to connect you with Joey Romanick. Not the greatest realtor in the Tampa Bay, Fort Lauderdale area, wherever the fuck he lives. It's America's favorite realtor, goddammit. Where else are you going to buy a $4 million home if he's not selling it to you? And if you buy this house, I'll sell you the box set of my TV show, Everybody Loves Raymond <laughs> Romaro. <laughs> hey, I don't think I'm going to win the fucking first round. Hey, this second round, people, is fucking difficult. Well, uh, what the fuck, <laughs> Joey? What happened to you? See, this is what happened. This is the kind, this is how we show love. We spend five minutes ranting against one of our listeners. This is what we do. Fucking Joey. <laughs> make sure we, make sure it's clear because people could be thinking we're talking about Joey Casada because we bitch about oh, him now too. Now I gotta and, drop his stupid fucking and, thing so in. Fuck him and his music. I don't, I mean, I know Joey Casada. Dude, if there's <laughs> one guy. Who's been whoring himself out on the internet? Oh. I don't know one fucking podcast that he hasn't been on in the last two weeks. No, I see his ugly mug everywhere, and I and it's funny too because when he introduces himself and he does his plugs, he says just to let you guys know, I'm a shout out loudcast Hall of Famer. Yeah, he, he, he needs tells us to be saying it because that's he, his biggest fucking claim to big, fame. It's his biggest accomplishment. Yeah, it's yeah. not oh, you, fucking oh, you played, playing on Ace's album. You played on Ace's album? No one cares. Where are you a Hall of Fame member? <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? And and you think he'd be boasting about Raise Your Glasses, the, the book that he's writing with us. No. That should be his first fucking thing. No. No, he's but he's fi- not. He's fired. You know what? He's fired. He's too busy talking about his spaghetti-like hairdo and whatever products he puts in there. Who is BO5 hot oil treatment? <laughs> And his rock and roll jeans he bought at the mall. You know what would be funny? <laughs> what if Joey Casada and Joey Romanek did a podcast and you can learn how to have pressed jeans and slick hair? <laughs> and it could be, you could have they it be called at the rock and roll store at the mall. It, it could be the, bottom. it could be the rock and roll real estate podcast with the, the two Joeys. Who would be working on what the longest? Would Joey Casada be straightening out his hair? Longer than Joey Romanik ironing his jeans. What's going to be straighter? That's how, you know what that'll that'll Kassada's be our, hair that, or Joey Romanik's. You know what tight that'll, jeans. That'll, that'll that'll be our poll for the week next week. Joey Romanik's tight jeans and Joey Casada's <laughs> hairdo. Yeah, what's better? What takes longer to get perfect? <laughs> Which one would you have if you had a pinata? Would you want to fucking bash more? 
See? Joey Casada <laughs> or Joey Romanek. So let me just say this. This is what happens when feedback is light on Shout It yes, Out Loudcast. Exactly. You you give us no outlet to rant. So now we have to pick at people. Joey Casada. <laughs> And his fucking rock and roll jeans. Oh, God. Hey, uh, can I have that scarf back that you, you know, pleasantly tied around your fucking jeans? Yeah. Hey, Chachi, give me that thing back. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) I know you're an extra in happy days with that, have that bandana around your fucking jeans, but can I have that back and give it to my dog? Fuck. Oh, I gotta catch. I gotta catch my breath. I'm gonna fucking die. Casada and fucking Joey. I'm the bitching all fucking week. Roman. Well, welcome to rock and roll real estate with the two Joeys. <laughs> Hi, I'm your rock and roll realtor, Joey Romanick. If you buy this house today, you will get the Danger Danger box set. We'll send you on a Monsters of Rock cruise. First prize is you don't have to go. <laughs> oh man, dude! I think I, I think our host is like a a host on the Monsters of Rock roots. <laughs> oh, that's okay. We were t- we were teasing him about that. Oh. <laughs> He's not a big fan of some of that music himself. He tells us that. Oh, we have fellow podcasters that fucking love that shit. Good fucking lord. I don't think Keith Roth is pumping his fist when he's playing <laughs> Nelson on Hair Nation, okay? I mean, I don't think so. Oh, Sorry. Fucking Nitro really pumps his nads. <laughs> All right, Tom. I got one comment over here from uh, YouTube. And that's Do from it. Marty White. Uh, a few summers ago, I was in the pool with my girlfriend who has a steroid problem <laughs> and is built like Lou Ferrigno. <laughs> At some point, she said, that shadow down there looks like a slee stack. What's a slee stack? I asked. She yelled that it was from Land of the Lost. I've never seen it, I said. We'll see it now, she shouted. She grabbed my head, forced it underwater, cackling like a sorceress. Uh, so, Zeus, don't feel bad that you don't know what that is. You're better off not knowing. You're better off not knowing near, uh, near a pool where you confess that. I thought you were going to say she grabbed your head, put your head underneath, and fought it on your fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> like you did when you were a kid. You grab your little cousin, like, hey. <laughs> but that's all, right. all I got, Tom. Over to you. All right. Let's wrap up feedback with uh, a post in Loudcasters from our good buddy, the Greek Thunder from Down Under, Thanis Akratides, posting a picture of him wearing a shout out loud cast shirt and he's at a festival in Sydney, some kind of a rock and roll festival with a, I don't know if Joey Casado was there or not, but it was a rock show and he was proudly displaying his shout out loud cast shirt and taking pictures of all the cool shit there that he knew that me and Zeus would like. So this week's comment of the week is a post of the week and Thanos, my friend, you are it. Good answer. Good answer. I like the way you think. I'm going to be watching you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Thanis. Much appreciated. He's always commenting, putting up good and uh, fun and interesting stuff. And there he is. He was telling us that people were going up to him. Hey, yep. I love that show. That's fucking awesome. And yep. he got to meet uh, Scott Donaldson, apparently, Tom. That's right. Uh, the yeah, the fox. Him. The fox from Kisteria. Yep. Yep. And uh, so, uh, Thanos, thank you for that, brother. We greatly appreciate that post and greatly appreciate you. Absolutely. And what we also appreciate, Tom, is Patreon. Mm-hmm. Patreon is where people can come and help and contribute to the show so that the show can grow. This week, we have another Patreon member that's just joined. His name is Greg Secrest, and I hope I'm saying that correctly, Greg. Uh, you joined as a Star Child member. Yes. So, Greg, thank you so much for contributing and helping out the show. And if you want to help out the show and become a member of Patreon, please go to our website, shoutitoutloudcast.com, 
on the landing page, you'll see uh, a link there to Patreon. Click on that. We have four different tiers at four different levels. Pick one that you want to join. And when you do join, you have different tiers with different membership perks. So you have the demon, the star child, the spaceman, and the cat man, each with different perks, different monetary contributions. You get things from anywhere from uh, T-shirts, stickers, feedback involvement, uh, post involvement, a sneak peek to videos that we put out before they go public. I just put out the second ACE video that we did from our interview, and they got to see that firsthand. Uh, ARC involvement, the March Madness involvement, Flashback Friday involvement, tons of stuff, video chats, and more. So please come and help the show. Join our Patreon family. There's well over 100 people already in here. Come join, have fun, and help the show out. And thank you for all those specifically greg that just joined and uh we really appreciate it thank you absolutely we love our patreon family all the longtime members all the brand new members like greg you guys are amazing thank you so much tons to offer please check us out patreon.com search for us on the app or click on the link on our website shoutoutloudcast.com and join the family thank you to all yeah tom uh what we do next is we go over to kiss world and Kiss World has a, a quite a few things popping up. Uh, what do you want to start with? Yeah, so it's funny because it's like it's like Kiss member news. It's not like the band news. So I think the first thing we'll tackle is the thing that's been buzzing around everywhere, and that's kind of the drama, unfortunately, with Ace Frilly and Steve Brown and Ten Thousand Volts and songwriting credit, guitar playing credit. It's kind of getting unfortunately ugly and you know it, it's a shame because everybody was so excited for the album everybody was so excited to hear from steve and from ace and of course they were on our show and gave us a great interview and it's just kind of getting ugly and you know it's typical ace he'll 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 bash somebody and say something and then he'll be like hey, but i love the guy he's like a brother to me like he, you know it, it's just it's just getting it's kind of getting exhausting zeus yeah the thing that annoys me is uh we had Ace and Steve on. Right. So you want the truth? There it is. Because neither one of them corrected the other. They said what they did. They talked about it. No one had a problem with what Steve said because Ace heard it. Yep. Steve didn't have a problem with what Ace said. Because he heard that. That's the truth of the matter. Who did what? Honestly, I don't give a fuck. But I don't some either. people, because it's fucking kiss. No, because it's Ace. Like, and because it's clickbait heaven and all the clickbait whores out there have to fucking stir up shit so people can go oh what the fuck oh my god do you hear it just before i came on i saw a new video now pepe castro hey this my buddy pepe castro yep he's all bullshit who's this guy steve brown i don't like what i'm seeing and what i am seeing is it seems like they're everyone's starting to fucking sandbag steve and and trying to make him to be the asshole. Why? I'll tell you why, Zeus. And again, this is my Tom's personal opinion here. It's because it's Ace. And everything Ace does gets toxic. Everything he does gets toxic. But he doesn't get the blame for it. it that's my point. That's because what pisses me off. Because everybody worships Ace. It's baked in. Like, oh, it's Ace. He doesn't. He Like, he can get away with that shit. And that's what annoying to people. Yep. With Ace, Tom, yep. it's just baked in. He's lovable Ace. I, 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 dude, how about holding him to account? Well, he's saying as an adult and fucking hold him at his words. Dude, he stirred that up. Yeah, I heard that Steve was going around saying he did 90%. Like, dude, that's not what he was saying, dude. He brought in a lot of that material and you work on it with him. It's a fucking collaborative effort. What's the fucking problem? The album doesn't say Ace and Steve Brown, 10,000 volts. You want to hear, you want to hear a quote from Ace? This is a quote from Ace. Quote, everybody sometimes toots their own horn a little more than they should without thinking. That's him talking about the guy who made his fucking record 
the most popular ace record that he's had in years. And that's the thanks that he gets. I'm sorry. I love ace and Steve and those guys, but it, it gets toxic. It gets ugly. It gets nasty. And then he falls up by saying, Oh, but I love the guy. I love the guy. Well, you, you know, that's like when you shit on Peter or you shit on Gene. Oh, but I love the guy. Uh, I'm a very good lyricist, Fraley says. Okay. I've always been. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, man. What are you talking about, buddy? It's, it's then- getting ugly and it's going and it's everywhere. It's a- every time you go on Ultimate Classic Rock, loud or sound, loud wire, blabbermouth, there's a new fucking quote, a new story. So the other crazy thing he, he says is we didn't use auto tuning. Like some people are saying, I have perfect pitch, so I can tell if someone's singing flat. I just redo it. Perfect pitch, you know. And then, and then after he spends half of this interview, and we'll give credit to that the metal voice, you know, good show, good YouTube channel, good uh, social media presence. He, he says, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't really matter who does what, as long as the end result is what I want, what Steve wants. But so, as far as you're concerned, it doesn't matter who did what. But you just spent 20 minutes bashing steve and saying that you were upset about what he said but it doesn't matter because he has no concept or publicist to say dude don't even bring this up why but he doesn't care because it's in the news and he doesn't it doesn't affect him every it's baked in with ace yep you're right everyone knows who who fucking get away with this stupid shit but it's bullshit because they're fucking sandbagging the guy yep steve's not going around saying oh yeah i did everything here no he didn't Ace is the one he's fucking giving credit. He helped him out. He brought in stuff to him. Fucking it is what it is. It's all the Peppy Castro's and Ace comments. I don't know if it's his girlfriend now. I don't know who's saying to hey, Ace. I don't like yeah. what Steve is getting a lot of credit for this. Like, yeah, this, it's ugly. Down, you know? Well, let's move to another annoying member of KISS. <laughs> let's, go to, let's go to our buddy Paul, who oh. posts a picture on Twitter. Our first vacation since the end of the road. The Royal at Atlantis in Dubai is spectacular in every way. Amazing architectural design. Fantastic service. Shopping, staff, restaurants, beaches, and water park. Absolutely blown away. Atlantis is superb. This takes it to another level. Now, sorry, we posted on social media how unbelievably fucking tone deaf he is that you're referencing Dubai when you fucked everybody on the Dubai merch. And now I understand we had a lot of people chime in. There are make rights. Doc McGee is sending people merch. Some people got like a meet and greet backstage thing. I get it. Fine. But it's still people have to work their asses off to get those make rights from the Dubai fuck up. Now, the thing that I love about this is, of course, I go right to the comments. Oh, enjoy. Have a great time. You should have a great time. This is going to be amazing. And then our buddy Nige. Pick up your DVDs while you're there. (laughs) Uh, Our buddy LP. Free stuff is awesome. Uh, our buddy Andy, can you grab my Dubai, my Dubai merch while you're there? Then it's like, have fun. Have a great time. You deserve it. This is amazing. I hope you have a wonderful vacation. Dude, that's part of the free package he gets. Can you please, you have to publicize that you're here and how wonderful it is. I get it. For your flight and shit. Why, I get it. why is, why is he keep going to fucking Dubai? Why? Because it's free. Well, and, he's, and he's getting credit for it. Anyways, I, I just, I love, I said, I say this during our interview with Keith Roth. I love the star child. I can't stand Paul Stanley. I just can't. <laughs> I just fucking can't. Now, let's talk about a KISS member, former member that we do love. And that is the great Bruce Kulik, who has hey, announced. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Bruce Kulik. Waffle Sundays. Ever try one? Oh, yeah. It was like National Waffle Day or whatever. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, good for him. He is touring uh, this spring slash summer. He's going to Finland. So maybe he's going to hang out with our buddy Yanni Aslak Rasanen (laughs) and Essa Tikkanen and Rayo Rutsalainen and all them. Emu Solani. Emu Solani. Yeah, I think they're all Finnish guys. But anyway, so Bruce has some dates in Finland. Uh, Looks like a couple festivals. So here's my theory, and I have absolutely no inside information on this. You got Gene doing a Europe tour. You got Bruce going to Finland. I'm, uh, this is what I think. I think they're going to Europe. I think they're doing these as like a test drive. And then they're going to come back to the States, and something's going to happen. That's what I think is going to happen. Who knows? You know, I did see I hope, something. I like, hope. It's wishful thinking. Gene said he's not going to ever put on the makeup. 
No, if you read the article, Gene says he's not putting on the makeup while he's touring for himself. Correct. He didn't say Kiss won't put up the makeup. He's like telling people, yeah, I'm not going to be wearing my wake makeup on the Gene Simmons tour. Of course right. not. Right. So, I mean, that's not a fucking groundbreaking statement. It's just exciting for me personally because my two favorite members, Gene and Bruce, are are active and touring and doing some stuff. So that's exciting. Uh, but other than that, in terms of Kiss the band, they're just selling thousand dollar box sets on their websites about it. So, oh, my vault came in, Tom. Oh, I should have brought it here so you could see it. Maybe I'll do it later when we tape tonight. I haven't or ordered. I haven't, I haven't. I have. I haven't ordered mine yet, but I will. I will. The, the the CD sold out. The actual the book, but the yeah. vault with the with the action figure thing, the coin, the book, CDs looks and fantastic. The safe, yeah, and the silly safe. Um, and my cats are already loving it. They're on top of it, fucking around on it. And stuff. I heard so, it's pretty. I heard it's pretty decent size. It's, it's not small. It's, I haven't taken it out of the box yet, Tom. Okay, but okay, you know they dropped it off and said it finally got delivered late last night. It finally saw. Her. Oh shit! It did get delivered. I go outside. The box is soaking wet. Oh, I'm no. like, you motherfuckers. <laughs> but thank you. Thankfully, it was well packed. There was a couple boxes, so it didn't get okay. wet inside. So nice. Cool. But anyway, yeah. Cool. All right. Let's take a little break. Um, while we're taking a break, Ace has a couple things to say. I want to make a public service announcement. My friend Pepe Castro speaking on his own behalf. He's not speaking on behalf of Ace Braley. Or anybody else from the Ace Fraley camp. So please disregard if he's getting a little bit frisky or angry or anything like that. Plus, he owes me a friendly fribble from back when we were kids and never paid me back. I really love those fribbles. Do you remember that strawberry fribble that friendlies used to get, Tom? <laughs> Delicious. Okay, we're back, and I was talking to Ace about the fribbles, and I had to remind him of the, his favorite menu item from Friendly's, and it's the fantastic Jim Dandy that oh, came with four bananas. <laughs> you know what? I'm a big fan, big fan of that four bananas, couple crushed nuts. I think they used to put cashews or peanuts, not really sure. Hey, Jim Dandy, great song. I'm a big fan of that band, too. <laughs> Those banana ones, like the banana split Sundays oh, yeah. and shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Friendlies, they're all, almost out of business, except there's one in Marlboro next to me. Yeah. I got real problems when I go there. <laughs> that hot fudge goes right through me. <laughs> and I used to like those Carvel ice creams with pussy puss, whatever the fuck it's called. Oh, my favorite was Fudgy the Whale. <laughs> Cookie oh, Puss, the other- cook- Cookie Puss Cookie was another. Puss. Cookie Puss was another favorite. Fudgy <laughs> the Whale. That's what they used to call me on the tour bus. My nickname was Fudgy the Whale because I had a couple problems. You know how it gets when you have that loose ice cream. I started getting loose on the tour bus. <laughs> oh shit! If I didn't make it in the back, look out! I once dated a girl. I called her Cookie Pussy. It's fucking fantastic. Oh, Jesus, what are we doing? <laughs> Do we have a topic this week? Oh, that's right. We have a great guest. Oh. <laughs> be like, Thanks for the introduction. My mom listened to the show. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Who are these people talking about cookie pussy? <laughs> anyway, anyway, Tom, we have the great Keith Roth from Sirius XM on the show. Fucking awesome conversation. Super excited to present this to you. What do you have to say before we send it over? I've been a huge fan of him for years. I've been a Sirius XM subscriber since 2008, and Keith has always been my favorite DJ on there. I think he's hilarious. Uh, he's got a great voice. Huge kind of rock fan. Loves everything. We get into all of it here. We veer off into all different topics. You guys are going to have a blast. Without further ado, Keith Roth. All right, this week we got a special guest. He's one of my, or should I say, my favorite Sirius XM DJ. You know him from Ozzy's Boneyard. You know him from Hair Nation, which coincidentally are my two favorite stations. And he's a lead singer and a guitarist with the bands The Dictators, Frankenstein 3000. He is the man. He's in in the house tonight. Keith Roth, what's up, brother? Woo! It's good to be with you guys, man. Fellow All right. fans, I mean... uh, you know, loving the Boston sports. I love the New York sports. And look at this. We're one big family. 
you know, having a great time, hanging out, talking about Kiss and whatever the hell else happens, you know? That's right. Kiss, Kiss crosses all borders. That's right, baby. They do. They yep. absolutely do. They yep. absolutely do. But it's an honor to be on your uh, podcast. I've heard nothing about nothing but great things about you guys for years. So appreciate it, man. Make it on shout it out loud is uh, is going to be sick. Cool. Appreciate be- it, man. I've been, and I've been following I've been following satellite radio for 15, 16 years. And I was telling Zeus, I'm like, we got to get Keith on. He's the DJ on my two favorite channels I listen to. He's a friggin' riot and he loves Kiss. We got to have a good time with him. So we're thrilled that you're here, buddy. Did you buy the lifetime uh, subscription many years ago? I, no, I didn't because at the time I didn't think I was going to still have it. So I've been paying for <laughs> I've been paying per month for sixteen years. <laughs> yep. I mean, anybody that's listening that long, I usually ask. But uh, yeah, I should have. But I had no idea that I'd still be doing this this year. All this time later. <laughs> Neither did I, man. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny, Tom, when you gave that intro, I was like, shit, you, we're going to have Eddie Trunkel back on again? Oh, oh <laughs> you can't insult our guest. I'm, I'm just joking. You said, oh, my favorite satellite serious. Uh, yeah, but oh. Eddie Trunk but Eddie Trunk does everything. I only know Keith from Sirius XM. I'm okay. joking. I we're, we're, know. We're, I, I know I, how I, much I, you fucking don't shut up about Keith. So I was like, all right, <laughs> let me email him. I will get him on. Let's go. I, I love you guys, man. You know, Ed, Eddie's a great friend. I've known him for, uh, you know, longer than I even want to share, but uh, he's always been the most, uh, he's really seriously what you hear on the radio. That's him yeah. off the air. I mean, I, I ran into him at an airport. We started talking about something music related. Next thing you know, we almost fucking missed our flights, you know, He's talking about some UFO thing. Next thing you know, it's like, you know, he's, I'm, you know, but he, I met him when he first worked in a record store and uh, all the great stuff he's been doing in radio for so many years. And bless the guy, man. I love yeah, him. Yeah. Yeah. He's been me. on the show a bunch of times. We got to hang out with him in Vegas last year for a while. So yeah, we're uh, honored to to have him as a friend. Of course, when you said that you had lost track of time, of course, you're talking about UFO. That's all he talks about. <laughs> That's his favorite band in the world, right? Of course it is. Yeah, he talks about it all the time. And I and, he, and I said last time he was on, I told him, Eddie, you are the reason I even discovered UFO between him and satellite radio. And I'm not now. I'm trying to sell him to Zeus because he loves all that British hard rock stuff. So I'm surprised, Zeus, you don't like uh, UFO. I, I mean, I, it's just one of those things that I've never said. Oh, that's shit. I don't listen. They just never got on. on like nobody had them in college. Yeah, I didn't exactly. have an older brother that got into him. So it was just something that just never fell in, into my uh, stereo for some reason. But I'm sure if, if they are like they, Tom says they are, that's definitely my wheelhouse. I yeah. love that whole, you know, white snake fucking uh, rainbow fucking blend of British blue deep purple kind of shit. Yep, deep, deep purple, purple yep. and stuff. Yep. So, yeah, I, I mean, I'll, I'll give it a shot, obviously. But, yeah, he he when he says UFO on our show, and his eyes light up, like, <laughs> let me tell you. I'm like, yeah, here we go. <laughs> so we know what's coming. But, yep. but for well, us. Especially we, from the, the Michael Shanker era. I mean, that was. Uh, that oh, was, yeah. Yeah. So, so it's funny you say that because I have a friend that got me into, like, Michael Shanker. I just know, oh, yeah, isn't that fucking the Scorpion's brother? Realize, right. you know, he was part of Scorpions, obviously, in the beginning. But they got me into that album, Assault Attack. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember And because the reason why is because Graham Bonnet's the lead singer, and I fucking love him. That's my favorite Rainbow album. Don't ask me why. But Down really? to Earth is my favorite Rainbow album. And uh, I fucking I mean, love Graham Bonnet. Well, he's gone on the show. We've talked to him off the air a bunch of times. Him and his girlfriend are fucking super oh, yeah. sweet people. Oh, yeah. And yeah, he's a I, character. Yeah, yeah, I fucking love that album. And I'm like, what the hell am I doing listening to a random Michael Schenker album? <laughs> it's the happens. only one in the discography. I have that assault attack because he's on there until he, what, whipped out his cock in the middle of a concert and got thrown out of the band? Well, he was doing a lot of drinking back then. So oh, yeah. A- anything is possible. But, I mean, <laughs> you know, when it comes to Rainbow, I mean, gosh, that Dio period was the best you know, with rising and uh, yeah, it's number three but, of three. Yeah. No, number three of three. <laughs> wow, Keith. Yikes. I'll take the GALT ever over here. And I'm not saying He's anything. Rebel. He's a rebel. So I it's will all say good. This. Yeah. It's amazing. I love all three. It's like three different bands. And I love oh, all yeah, three. Totally. It, yeah. There's right. nothing wrong with it. I mean, I love it. When I hear Stargaze, that may be the best song of all Rainbow songs, oh. right? Or ta- Tara Woman, you know. Yeah. Uh, Tara, uh, yep, yep. <laughs> Yep. And I actually I, got a I got a Blackmore Ace Freely story I could tell you. If, oh, uh, all right, that's a great way to start the show. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. So, uh, 
So I'll do some name dropping. Uh, Richie Please. Blackmore. We used to do this show called Kissmas or uh, Kissmas every year, and we'd get the guys to join us. So we got Blackmore to join the show, and we became buddies with Richie. Richie's a great guy. I mean, I know a you are a rarity then, from what I understand. I've had never had any issues. I've been to his Christmas party. I farted on his couch. I mean, <laughs> you know, literally from that ZD. But anyway, uh, he was telling me that when he was living in Connecticut, uh, he was looking for a house in Connecticut. Oh, no. <laughs> and he was look- looking for houses. And he came across Ace Freely's house. Oh, and no. he really hey, liked He really hey, liked for sale by For sale for own by owner. Come on. I get a nice three-bedroom apartment. Just stay away from the basement. You'll have a little. <laughs> Little problems in there's no steps. <laughs> That's pretty good, you know. I could say that you're ace freely and no one would uh, even doubt it. Yeah, so, it's, it gets around on our program. He's I, I, been he, like he's a, been wor- he's been like working Tourette's. on it for years. Yeah. It's, it's like Tourette's it, Ace comes out on the show with the most stupid ideas and fucking things that come in my head. Ace is doing so now Ace is a realtor. Thank you for putting that in. <laughs> nice to meet you, Ace Freely Realtor. Freely Realty. I got a nice ring to it. I got a two bedroom before you. I like to show you. I was just with him on that Monsters of Rock cruise with that whole dog. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Was that before or after somebody somebody called him a cunt? Jesus. Well, you know, I I heard. Were you there for that? I I was there for that, but he was just like pointing at his watch and going like, you know, uh, I guess he was pissed that they cut into their set time and. And then there was uh, Ace uh, went on after KK, but KK, it, it was a whole domino effect. That's were, what I heard. Yeah. But everything got worked out. But uh, back to the, the house. So yeah. Richard Blackmore goes to Freely's house and is like, well, wow, this is a pretty cool house. And he's with an entourage of people. But when he's in Ace's living room, he sees a huge shower curtain, like a humongous shower curtain in the living room. And he says to Ace, well, what is that? And he goes, oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We're getting some uh, work done to the house. Don't worry. So now Blackmore's really curious about what's going on behind the curtain. So when his entourage, you know, was walking around the house, Richie goes into the living room and takes a peek. And what happened was Ace Freely drove his car through the living room and, and the front end of the car was there, which he thought was hysterical. Ace Freely. So obviously he didn't buy the house, but, um, Ace hung up a shower curtain. I guess he was planning on getting it fixed before he sold the house. So okay, so this is why it took – I can't believe it took this long for Keith to come on the show and tell us our new favorite Ace Freely story. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Garage. I got a couple of them because uh, – I'm sure, you, know, I'm sure yeah. you do. Yeah, we have a couple we've heard, too. We can tell you off the air. I can't – we can't tell this one on the air. No. <laughs> no. Did, did you ever uh, get him on the show? Yeah, we had him on a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about 10,000 volts. Yeah, we just okay. had him on about, about a month ago. Yeah. Good record. Yeah. What do you think of it? Let's go let's quickly talk about that. What do you think? Well, uh, Brown hit me to the whole thing that he was working with him on it. And then yeah. uh, so he, he sent me a couple mixes before it came out. And uh, I listened to about five or six songs. I plan on buying it. But I like yep. the fact that, you know, his where his guitar solos sit in the mix it's kind of like the old school Kiss vibe, and yep, yep. Sonically, he sounds great. You know, some of the lyrics are good. It's definitely one of those records that you know I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, take on road trips with me, I, or you know, just to listen to to really yeah. get to it because I know he he made it in the theme of an album. You know, it wasn't totally. Like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. What yeah, do you guys cool. think? I mean, you know, you. Guys I think are- it's I, I yeah, I think it's cool. I mean, I think Steve Brown worked a miracle there. I mean, the production is incredible. The songs are hooky, they're catchy, melodic. A sounds okay in some of them i'm not going to sugarcoat the vocals are a little bit tough but the songs rip they're they're very very poppy and hooky compared to like anomaly space invader stuff like that but i think it's a really good album and, you know kudos for somebody in their 70s making a, a you know a relevant rock record so yeah i know i hear that i hear yeah. that well, yeah you yeah. you know grew up a big kiss fan so yeah. I, I knew he'd be the right guy to do it because you know he's you know in his mind he knows what it, what an ace freely record should sound like and uh, yeah. was, was yeah. he got to collaborate and you know co-produce it with him so uh yeah. that's another reason why i can't wait to dive in and really just you know take that quality time like long rides or uh, yeah, yeah. being yeah. on the road i could pop it in and really get into the theme of an album with him yep yeah so let's start from the beginning we always ask these questions of all our guests about kiss and where it fits in with their lives and their thoughts and everything growing up. So first question we usually ask people is, did you have a favorite KISS member growing yeah, up Ace, or even now? Yeah, Ace Freely. Oh, wow. Ma- makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I remember, uh, you know, the Love Gun record, 
you know, hearing that Ace is making his singing debut. And I remember, you know, when I got that album and went right to shock me, that was all I wanted to hear. Yeah. And I, I listened to it like six times and then I got into the record. So, uh, yeah. you know, he's always been my favorite because he's from the Bronx. You know, I'm from the Bronx. Yeah. There was that, you know, my I wrote uh, a song called Bronx Boy. <laughs> And my uncle was actually the principal at Dwood Clinton High School, where uh, Ace went to school. So no you know, way, yeah. Ross the boss went there. All those guys. Yeah, so I, re- oh. I repeated the seventh grade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's um, he, he's a uh, quite a character. All right, do you oh, have yeah, a favorite, favorite um song? No, I don't think I could pick a favorite song. I I, I mean uh, records for me, it'll always be the first one. Oh, oh, that's wow. a good one. That was the Did next you, oh, question. Okay. Okay. Wow. All right. As far as song goes, we don't have to hold you as this is the favorite of all time. What I always think of Kiss is like, we always go through periods. Like growing up, oh, Love Gun was my favorite song. Eh, now, uh, the song that I can't turn off or I'll look to is uh, Black Diamond, for instance. Do you have a song that comes to mind when I said favorite song? And it doesn't, you, you know, you're not held to this. King of the Nighttime World. Is oh, one. beautiful. Yes. One. Yeah. yeah. Don't you, you know. just fucking love that? And the way the guitar after the car crash. Yeah, it's the best, man. The best. Awesome. And then Paul comes in and the drums are just going. The groove. Yeah. You just gave me chills. I haven't right? kissed since the seventies. And now like I got hair on my arm, you know, and that last part where Paul just keeps around I'm the king. It's like king. when you're little, you can picture them from the cover of destroy on top of this doomsday fucking you know marvel comics they're on top of this fucking king going i'm the king i'm the king well, just screaming well, it out to people and ah. it's funny because and it's funny because right now over keith's shoulder he's got a bunch of framed albums and destroyers yeah. right there one of them yeah destroyer right uh, yep see it right there next to uh, alice cooper and i can't see what else is on the other side of it uh it's his new york dolls yes Kickers, cheap trick like uh, a virgin what else you got there <laughs> <laughs> Village people's greatest. <laughs> hey, hey, why uh, not? Come on, baby. Sade. I see, oh, I see the. I, I also see the. Kaja Goo Goo. I got there the Kaja Goo Goo box set signed by them. That's a that's a beautiful moment. <laughs> I see the Shaft soundtrack above there and behind you. Yeah, that's signed by Richard Roundtree and Isaac Hayes. S- oh sadly, no, shit! Nice. Yeah, sadly, neither of them are with us. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Billy Joel. What is that over there? No, oh, I see Zeppelin Four, top right. Yeah, I Step see Bruce, Spring, Bruce Springsteen. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Springsteen. Billy Ocean you got there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, too bad Bottom's not here, right? You know. Oh, uh, I don't I get us started. So we yeah. do a little side cast, uh, Zeppelin Chronicles, just because we had to get our Zepp fix in. Yeah. We just talk about all the Zeppelin albums, go all the way straight through, and it just, it's just a different beast. Like, you can't do, a, for us, we can't do, like, a, a podcast. And just talk about music and just randomly throw Zeppelin in there. No, no, no. They need they their have own. Have, they have like, to have their own. When you thing. talk about a Zeppelin album, you gotta like you gotta fucking put your time into it and get into dirty details. My oh, favorite yeah. Zeppelin album is the one I'm listening to at the moment. I mean, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Nice. You know, so nice. I hope you're listening to Zeppelin three then. Oh, I love oh. Zeppelin three. I love Zeppelin three. I, I love it. Since I love all. You know, the only one I really never gravitate to too much is four. Because it's just overplayed. Same Thank you, like, Keith. You know. I said the same thing, and people wanted to string me up and kill me because I was not a fan. And I said, yeah, but overrated a- doesn't mean you don't like it. It's just fucking overdone and overrated. No, I don't but- like it. No, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, what do you mean? Three, you four sticks doesn't pump your nads, Tom? <laughs> well, yeah, four sticks and, and like uh, you know, when the levee breaks, you know, things like that that you don't hear. But I mean, like back in black is the same thing. You know, it's right. like. Right. If I'm going to want to listen to an ACDC record, I want to put on Power Age. If I, you know, there Zeppelin, you go. Yes. You know, Zeppelin three, you know, uh, I love yeah. Prince, Achilles last stand, candy store rock. Oh, you know. hot song for nowhere. Favorite deep cut. It's, That's it's awesome. Best. It's so good. See, we just this turned a Kiss this, podcast into Zeppelin, which is awesome. all right. We but, do this but, here on time. This, this is, I knew this good. was going to happen when we had Keith on because we're all just music nerds and we just veer off in all the bands we love. I love it. Love and it. the bands are the same way. You know, it's like when bands, talk to bands outside of their band. It's yep. like conversations could go on for hours. I mean, like Joey remote, like, you know, I mean, I used to, he used to call me 
he knew when my wife used to work. And so wow. he, he would like, he would call me at night on Saturday night. She used to bartend and he yep. called me. And the only way I could ever end the conversation, if I started talking about the Ramones, but Joey would talk about kiss and cheap trick and he loved all, you know, and I was like, all right, it's been four hours. I got to, <laughs> hey, with the Ramones record, all right, I got to go, man. You know, <laughs> But, you know, I mean, hey, we're all music nerds, and that's what it oh, comes Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you got, if you don't have the passion, and that's what it's really about. And I always say, like, you know, people that are like, oh, fucking, this music sucks, this music's great. Yeah. I don't care. I'd rather be you. If you really love something, that's awesome. What do you need yeah. me to agree with you for? Right. Well, I mean, enjoy it, guys. I mean, you know, you yep. were just talking before about King of the Nighttime World, and oh. you know, with Paul on the mountain in the po- post-apocalyptic world. I mean, yeah. it's fired me up. And you guys have been talking about Kiss forever. I mean, you still have yep. that passion. I'm every envious. week, every week. All well, believe time. me, yeah. for I the people that. that listen to this show, think we fucking hate the band by this point. <laughs> because as much as we love them, then all of a sudden Paul will post something that you want to fucking roll your eyes. He's. He, we were just talking about it earlier. Oh. That. He posted a photo of him like he's in vacation in Dubai. Like, oh, this is the most beautiful vacation. This that. We're yeah, like, and everyone's hey, like, fucking... everyone, and everyone's like, where the fuck are my DVDs from the Dubai hey, show? Dickhead, from... <laughs> dude, are you fucking tone deaf? You fucking, you guys have all that money from the Dubai shit you stole. And you're bragging that you're over there vacationing, like, but you gotta have tell, fun I'm, with it. I'm, man. I'm, I'm sure you got a good discount. Uh, I'm telling you, if you want to be if you want to be entertained, Keith, go on Paul's Twitter, check that post of him with the picture in Dubai, and read the comments. <laughs> all right, yeah, all right. Him, he's getting bludgeoned. <laughs> That's my first order of business. Uh, yeah. yep. Well, yep. if if he's not riding his electric bike and checking out the nearest gelato stand, whatever <laughs> fucking rock and roll thing he's doing these days. So I guess he's not your favorite member of Kiss. Oh, well, we huh? love him. Oh no, we, we love we love we him, get, but he's just annoying. <laughs> we, he's one of the least probably criticized on the him and fucking no, but everyone is like, oh, you either hate Ace or you hate no Peter or you hate Paul. Look, it's Kiss. If you take this shit too serious, there's something wrong with you. Right, see, right. I see. For me, I, I love I love the Star Child. I hate Paul Stanley. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, as a, so I guess you didn't like the uh, Soul Station record. I liked it. It was okay. It was okay. I I loved it. It it was okay. I grew up on that R and B stuff. Yeah, exactly. His voice sounds great. You know, I thought his band. His I thought his band was spectacular on that album. I think the production's fantastic on it. Yep. I love Temptations and Motown and all that. Right. Yeah. And he did a good job with it. Even his original songs fit that mold. Now, is he going to sing that shit live and loud? Probably not. But I don't give a fuck. I don't yeah. sit there and live in that imaginary world where someone tells me something should offend me, right? right. If right. Paul's singing I think it's great, a lot easier I, for, I think it's a lot easier for him to sing because of the the register. He doesn't have to, you know, try to re- yeah. reach those ridiculous. You might be right. Oh, know, totally. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he All probably right. sung that stuff his whole life, you know. So yeah, I think the next question. So you already told us the debut, which we had. We did an episode on because it was only about not too long ago. It's the fiftieth anniversary. For mm-hmm. some reason, the debut album somehow gets like overlooked so when people talk about kiss albums they'll they'll usually gravitate to certain albums and that's either love gun rock and roll over destroyer or they'll jump to creatures of the night right and things like that or revenge and i think there's a couple album just doesn't get like the recognition but everybody loves all the songs on there every single song they love yeah, I think it, I think it's almost it's almost like it's almost like two reasons why it gets overlooked. It could be similar to the thing with Zeppelin Four. The songs are like so they're on the, the songs are performed live in every concert. The, the songs mm-hmm. are on every compilation. They're on every lot. You can't escape the songs. So it's almost like yeah, I like it, but I don't want to tell you that it's my favorite because it's it's everywhere. You know, right. the weird and, thing about that record is like yes, you're absolutely you, those songs are everywhere. But I'm so used to hearing it in that sequence with Strutter all the way down yeah it's yeah like, you know it's like yeah i can hear it on the radio those songs individually but as a record you know what's coming next it, yep. uh, and there's just yep. something magical about it you know the mike yeah. douglas show uh you know oh, oh that firehouse yeah. version and Amazing. uh him and uh tony fields uh right i mean that was tony tony. To- to- tony fields yeah did i say tony fields yeah 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 tony fields <laughs> that's I your mean, brother Right. <laughs> um, but you're right. But the other thing we talked about is the reason why it doesn't get the love is because those songs are more known from a live. Yeah. Because a live is where most people learn those songs. And then they're like, oh, let's go try the albums that they were actually off of. 
and they're not used to that version of those songs. They're used to the alive version versus the next three albums. We learned those albums from Destroyer, those songs from Destroyer, Love Gun, and then Rock Alive and 2. And then came Alive on. 2 came on. So right. I think that makes the debut album, you're not used to hearing 100,000 years off the Still. debut. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. I, I totally yeah. get that. Yeah. yeah. I love the live too, man. I thought, I thought side four was like oh. the first half a record they never released. You know what totally I mean? Totally agree. Totally agree. Those songs. Wait, whoa, whoa, awesome. So let's go back. Alive one or live two? Where do you go? I mean, what I'll listen to, I know alive one is better, iconic, quintessential, but if I'm going to listen to Kiss Alive, I'm going to listen to Alive two. I just. Yes. It, that's it, the right answer, Keith. It's I nice know. having you, Keith. Great meeting <laughs> you, brother. <laughs> but, but listen, I, Zeus, I understand how that record inspired so many trillions of guitar players. And, it, you know, it, it, people never get sick of it. I have friends of mine all day long that can listen to that album. My yep. buddy Bob Pantella, can, you know, from Monster Magnet, could quote every little uance or emulate every little uance. My buddy Sean uh, from the band Mars Needs Women. I mean, they yep. they listen to that record on a loop day after yep. day. And I've heard it so many times. So when I hear it live, too, it's fresh. And then, it's you know, fresh. you yeah. than Life and Rocket Ride and, uh, you know, yep. All American Man. It's like, I don't know. It's a different twist. Yeah. So that's Agreed. the other thing, Agreed. too, though. I, I don't know where the love and infatuation came from side four of Kiss Alive too, because it, because it was new music. It was like it was almost like discovering hidden tracks, right? Rocking right. in the USA, yeah, that's and, not uh, good. And right, journeys any it. way you want it, any, whatever the yeah. fuck he calls it. And but, just those, but those three, terrible. but those Rocket three Ride, songs. Now that song, oh, that song was probably Ace. And all American just, man, all American man. That's yeah, bad. Yeah, and larger than right. Yeah, that's yeah. okay. That's oh, right. stop it! What's the matter with you? It's all right, but this is why we have our fun. It's not, yeah. do you like God of Thunder? <laughs> like, that's a great song. Yeah. Like Destroyer. Yeah, that's a great out. Like, we have these debates, and our listeners, they know Tom's the love gun guy. I'm the destroyer guy. He's the alive too. I'm a live one. But it's okay. You can like anything you want. And just as long as you have fun with it, who gives a fuck, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. 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 Now, how many concerts have you gone to? Have you seen Kiss Live? Oh, man, I couldn't really uh, give you an exact number. I mean, the first time I saw them was on Dynasty. Uh, oh, wow. With uh, New England opening, a yep. little kid. Um, and then, uh, you know, Dude, I saw you can't them. be older than us, are you? Uh, I don't know. How, how old are you guys? We we just turned 50. We'll be 51 this year. I'm a yeah. few years older, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And okay. you saw I'm, Dynasty? I'm, wow. Yeah, I was 79. Yeah. So, yeah, seventy nine. I was. I, was, uh, I, was, I grew out I of them by then. I wasn't a teenager. How's that? Uh, okay, I'll okay. leave it at that. I'll All leave right. it at wow. that. Good for but you. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I have friends of mine like my buddy Danny from Angel caught uh, Paul's guitar on the uh, Alive Two tour. Well, oh, wow, wow! Or he caught the neck or something. He got a piece of it from that night. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, he's he's a couple years older than us, but yeah, that was great. And then, um, you know, I've, I've seen them in the clubs. I saw them when they played the Pony. For yep. uh, Hot in the Shade, when Buck Dharma's band opened. I mean, I've probably seen him maybe 15 times, 10 times. Okay. 10 times did before. you see him on the end of the road? No, I did not. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. You didn't catch uh, him in Madison Square Garden at the end there either, huh? No, but the funny thing is, Eric Singer, I was playing a gig that night, and I, I, I played a band with this guy, Tiny, who played in TSOL and Rhino Bucket. Yep. And we're about ready to play a, a fucking brewery. And our like our little like local band, and he's texting with Eric Singer, you know, right oh. before he's going on, because Tiny and Eric are very good friends. And, yeah. and Eric's telling him, "Have a good gig." I mean, he's doing the first, <laughs> the, last two, the last two fucking shows that they're playing, which I thought was hysterical. Like, oh, oh yeah, awesome. I'm talking, Tiny's like, "Oh, I'm talking with Eric Singer." Look, and he's like, "Oh, have a good gig, Tiny." Meanwhile, we're, <laughs> we're playing some brewery to like a hundred people, and he's playing like the Garden, which was really. You, you probably had more passion at your show than they had at theirs. So uh, you guys we, went? You didn't like we, it? We were we were in New York for the entire week, and we saw both shows, and they were the same shows that we saw four and years Manchester, ago. In the end of the like, road. Yeah, same, nothing different. Same exact. And Mohegan thing. Sun, Manchester. We saw End of the Road how many times? Maybe five, six, I seven think. times. Five or six. If you every, count the cruises, eight times at least can tell right. the difference. No, Thanks exact good, same huh? show. It, it's like going to a movie theater and seeing Star Wars. You love it, but by the sixth or seventh time, you're like, I've seen this. You're right. Yep. Yep. You know what's coming next. And you know everything. what's coming next. You get yep. into it as much as you can, but you just, 
you fool yourself and like they're gonna do something different. They gotta do something different. They gotta. I mean, at least. Something. I mean, at least. At least they gotta say the- something different. Nothing. I mean, at least for us, for the final, final show, we were second row on the floor. Second wow. row right there. So, I mean, at least that, at least we got our own personal memory of being like, you know, feeling the heat from everything, seeing right, right in front of Gene's face. So that made it awesome for us, but we're all sitting there waiting. Are they going to do something? Are they going to do something when the curtain drops? Peter coming gonna, out, right? Yeah. We're, somebody we're, coming out. Are they going to do something? Yeah. Are they going to say something? No, we're going to show you a picture of the fucking avatars and give you a QR code scan. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're going to do for you on the last show. <laughs> you know, I've made fun of all the shit that they sell for years, but the funny thing is I, I wind up fucking buying it for some uh, reason. We all do. Of course. You know, Dude, it, there's it, a fucking I mean, gold bar over there that I paid <laughs> stupidly for. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you laugh at it, but they always got you for some reason, you know? I that, mean, that, well, but you, you, that's a great point. That, that's, and that's one of the reasons why I think our show has lasted this long because we constantly bitch about the stupid things they do and then we're like oh let's go to new york city for the weekend and go see them twice (laughs) did you catch the whole new york experience of it though like the cabs and oh yeah 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 yeah. we got into that we were like in the middle of his tard central we were right right there in front of it all with all the stupidness people fighting over pizza boxes and stupid shit People like, hey, can you get me a, a, a subway ticket with Ace with fucking Eric Singer? I'll be like, what are you doing? L- listeners sending us DMs. Like, I know you're at the last show for Kiss, but in the meantime, can you w- walk down 18 blocks down the corner? I heard there's some fucking Kiss fucking bottle caps available. Can you pick me up some? Oh, you fucking dick. I'm hey, do you guys mind if you fun. can? Hey, hey, then you can pay. Hey, can, can you scoop up some of that confetti when Rock and Roll All Night plays? <laughs> What? Grab me one of those gold fucking balloons from the concert. Just stick it under your fucking jacket. Keith, 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 we're not making up any of this. This No, I know it. That's why I get a kick out of it. I love it. How about subway tokens where people wanting you to get the subway tokens? Oh, yeah, the little subway cards. So the newspaper ones were my favorite because there was like three different editions of the post with the covers. Oh, I got two of them. Can you can you walk down, take three subways and get to this spot and trade this with the fucking uh, the bum in the corner? I heard he's hiding like 15 stacks of the third edition trade with him. Oh, yeah, I'll be right on that. You guys should have gotten enough stuff to sell it where it could have covered your whole trip. Oh, Keith, believe me, you have no idea the amount of people there that were, they would open up like a newspaper box and walk away with a stack of like 50 newspapers. Th- oh, th- that just, was happening. People now, if you're, if you're bad shit. guys, you can go to the dollar store, get some of the gold balloons, say, yeah, this is from night one. <laughs> yeah. 100 bucks. Here we go. Well, there's, you know, probably, there's, there's probably people doing that on eBay right now. I got this I'm confetti sure off of Gene's shoulders. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe they didn't do anything different, though. You know, nothing, I mean, nothing, or nothing. say something, or do a video montage, or or give a tribute to the to the the crew, previous member. Just you know, and it just makes you feel like, dude, maybe I am that sucker that people that don't like Kiss call us like, right? Maybe we yeah. are fucking idiots. Oh, we are. Think ever do, you think they'll ever do another show? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, without without makeup. Yeah, I think they'll do something. No, I think makeup. they'll do it with makeup. I think they'll they, do Vegas. I think they'll do a couple spots here on the, or the thing. Or, the, uh, the thing. Well, the things we're hearing is that they can't. Well, that. yeah, that's what I had, had heard because they signed a contract because they, they right. paid a not, lot of money to make sure that they can't say or right. they can't do another show under right. Kiss. I'm with thinking the they can't tour. They'll do one offs. That's what I think. Maybe right. I don't know. I, I don't think they'll still know. do a Vegas residency. There's too much Vegasness. Nah. Amongst them in that era, and it makes too much sense. Dude, the Eagles are doing a residency. Kiss can't sell out the, the sphere. They can do a residency. They're not they're gonna, not, I'm not saying Kiss is doing the it. sphere. Yeah. 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 Well, that's true. Yeah, it doesn't have to be the sphere. Yeah, it could be the friggin' Red Robin that the fucking on the strip they can do. <laughs> or, or the Get pizza a free- place, or the pizza place in Midtown. They <laughs> yeah, can they, you know, they can do that. Here's, here's your a, pizza box. <laughs> Get a free hometown buffet <laughs> dinner for a week <laughs> if you buy tickets to kiss and get a certified platinum edition of fucking asshole <laughs> i don't know <laughs> and then paul just all right love gun woo and they, there you go we're gonna do i mean uh, it, love gun. what was cool though is uh you know when i uh, i got to do that show with them at the whiskey 
And, yeah. Uh, yes. You know, yes. And, oh yeah. Well, yeah. When they did the promo and they had the kiss. Ch- oh, I'm, I'm going to get to that. But keep talking, Keith. I got questions about that. But but there was one really funny thing about that. The uh, late great Taylor Hawkins, because oh, what yeah. was um, they um, they closed down the streets and Kiss was staying at the hotel down the block yep. from the whiskey. So Morello, me and Tom did it, and he ran down the block to you know ask them questions for, for the show, and the streets were all shut down. So they had me given like play by play of them yep. walking up the street, walking into the whiskey. Yep. And all of a sudden, like everybody's lined up, but all of a sudden this little guy is walking up the street. And as it's getting closer, it's Taylor Hawkins. Oh. And I said, and I said to him, and if you heard the original it, you know, before it got edited, I said, how the fuck did you wind up here? And he goes, you know how much cock I had to suck to get this far? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, which was really funny because it was oh. just me, Kiss and Taylor Hawkins walking oh. up the hill. God a, love him. Uh, God good. rest his soul, man. Damn. Oh. That whole band yeah. loves Kiss. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. David oh. Grohl to shit. Dave loved Dave. And they all love Kiss. him. They yep. love yep. him. Yep. Now, last thing I wanted to ask you in those original questions is, do you have a favorite Kiss memory? Um. Yeah. Uh, well, it, there's a couple of them. Um, one of them I can't talk on the air, but it was pretty funny. Um, okay. Kiss memory, man. Could be as a child getting an album. Could be as a as a performer meeting them. Uh, you know, it's kind of cheesy, but uh, you know, Christmas of seventy. When, when did uh, Alive Two come out? Seventy seven, right? Yeah, seventy seven. Yep. Yeah, you know, I was told. You know, because I was like, you know, bad kid. I wasn't getting Kiss Alive Two. That was the only thing that was on my list. And then, uh, you know, we we're at my brother's house for Christmas. And then when they handed me Alive Two for Christmas. Oh. It was such a magical moment that I almost got a little bit, uh, you know, emotional because. Oh was, man, that's, that's awesome. all I wanted. So yep. uh, they're like, a, they're like, psych. Yeah, psych. His Peter Chris's solo album, kid. <laughs> I mean, then 1998 when they reissued the stuff on CD with the tattoos and stuff. Uh, yes, someone got me that, which was really cool. I mean, but there's so many memories. You know, the music is. Uh, you know, I've been in certain moments of my life where you know, Kiss was the soundtrack. There's so yep. many of them. I mean, um, it's really hard. Maybe it'll come to me another one. As, as that's okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 um, I apologize. I, I incorrect. I rudely cut you off. I heard you say something about Hotel California. Oh yeah, that was the two records I got for Christmas in '77. Uh, Kiss Alive, wow, too, and Eagles Hotel. So California. you are the second person in the world, other than me, that likes Kiss and the Eagles. Oh, no, because I find oh. that people don't like the two. I mean, look, you know, I look at it like if you like whatever kind of music, you, I, you know, people say guilty pleasure. To me, there's no such thing as a guilty. Oh, pleasure. I hate that term. Yeah. If you yep. dig something, you dig it, whatever yep. it is. You know, I mean, I, yep. you know, I, I never, you know, use the word guilty pleasure. I mean, if I like something, I like it. So you, you know, like I, the Eagles big fan? No, I'm not a big fan, but I liked, uh, you know, I like the Joe Walsh era and I liked, you know, the early songs are undeniable and. You know, musicianship wise, they're phenomenal. Something so. about a band that you can have different members sing songs, right? Four or five guys right. to sing songs. Yeah. Yeah. Like just Kiss. Some... Yeah. Yep. And the Please. Beach. I mean, and, and the Beatles. I mean, there's really and not... the Beach Boys. <laughs> yeah, technically. And the Beach Boys, yeah, well, yeah. and the Who. We 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 just on one of our other uh, one of our other sidecasts. We do a, a monthly show called the Album Review Crew. We just talk about different albums, and we recently did the Who's Next. I mean, oh, you got three, yeah. three of the, th- yeah, three of the four guys. I want to, I want to see that. I, there's a reaction that we got from. What do you think of that album? Oh, I love. I mean, my wife would. Ah, so- see, oh my you god! Know, you know, I can't believe you pulled that song. Tom oh. can't stand. I love John Entwistle. I think it's a great song and a melody. I love his voice on that. I think it's great. That he is was, phenomenal. That guy. that's the song you picked. I think that's great. I mean, you know, the one thing about John is, you know, I got to know him from radio. And, really? Uh, okay. Okay. I'm quoted in this book called Brit Mania because um, wow. the first time uh, he came down to do our radio show, he asked, you know, how to make a pot. He wanted to make his own pot of coffee. So uh, when the coffee was done, he took out a bottle of cognac and he poured the whole fucking bottle in the cognac Jesus. Uh, of, of the cognac into the coffee with milk and sugar. And he gave me one. He's like, I was like, there's a, but a third one, I couldn't even see straight, man. It was like a whole other world, but he was, he's the kind of guy. That if he and I swear to you, if he yep. was in a tour bus and he saw four fans waiting at the corner to meet him, he would stop the bus and get out because he gave a shit about his fans more than anybody. Really? Wow. 
He was the that, nicest, greatest, coolest guy ever. And it was he wow. died, right. He was only like what fifty five or fifty six. He when was he, young when he went. But yeah. I, we, I, well, what we, a way to go, right? Prostitutes and cocaine. I mean, yeah, there you go. There you go. He's <laughs> fucking a legend. But we talked about the fact that that fucking live concert footage of Won't Get Fooled Again with Townsend flies on his knees across oh. that, then fucking that scream, and you got Daltrey flinging the fucking, fucking microphone. Fucking rock and roll, baby. And, 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 and what do you call it? And um, Entwistle's just fucking banging that bass, and fucking Crazy Moon, who has to tape the tape fucking his headphones, fucking to, headphones to, his head to his head around yep. his head. Right. How yep. insane was that band live to look at that footage? I'm like, they that were, is the greatest, were my greatest fa- fucking video. Growing up, they were my favorite band, hands down. Um, wow. I hate to say it, more, way more so than Kiss, because uh, not when That's I got okay. introduced to The Who, and it was, I guess it was Meaty, Beaty, Big and Bouncy compilation. Yes, yes. And I was like, give me, oh, I'm Tommy. I mean, like, you know, that, that record spoke to me as a kid. I mean, wow. you know, every who wants to that album and Quadrophenia. I mean, Townsend yeah. was a fucking genius. He was like the greatest yeah. oh, best absolutely. rhythm guitar player. I mean, you know, just everything about that band I adored. Yeah, there's, we a, saw, there's, um, a, there's a great documentary. Yeah, yeah. There's a great documentary. I don't know if it's on Amazon Prime. I can't remember Zeus. And it's it was a on Amazon. The, it was on Amazon. Yeah, it's all about the making like of classic Who's albums next. and making on. Yeah. Oh, I've seen oh. that. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. The fuck, classic great. albums on DVD, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, and yeah, it's, yeah. it's there's a part where Daltrey's like singing behind blue eyes, and he's like, "Listen to fucking what Keith is doing," and he's just got this smile, like still after all these years. Just like fucking look at the genius behind this guy on the drums. Yep. And you don't even think about it. That song is something out of the ordinary, but he's just fucking like this guy is just incredible. And then Townsend is just talking like, what fucking language is this guy speaking in? Because he's like, oh, oh yeah, like I a, just switched this song. Hey, I'm doing this. I'm yeah. doing this on this. You're like, he's the best guitar like- player in the world, man. He's just unbelievable. I he's mean, yeah, you know, I mean, and, and you know, he uses like really heavy guitar strings. I mean, it's amazing that he could play any leads because I think that, you know, uh, of the depth of the, of the strings, but he's just, you know, you get me. I mean, the who everything. Did you hear the last record they did in 20? No, 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 no. I love that. I mean, who are you? was such a great album to me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought that this was the best record they've done since who are you instead of wow. it's right. Or, uh, really? faces, after, uh, face, dance? face dances, face dances. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought, you know, if you give it a listen, you give it four or five listens, you'll see what I'm saying. It's a cloud. Wow. So Daltrey is coming around here. He's right. touring. And doing an acoustic set. Roger is. And Tom and I, I'm like, do we really want to see? I'm like, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm assuming his voice is rough. Just like you better, you bet. Right. Um, but I'm like, do we want to see that? What do you think of that show? Would you think it's pretty decent? I mean, come on. Let's be honest. I mean, Roger's what, pushing 80? Yeah. yeah, you got to go see him, man. Any that, opportunity that, you got to see these icons, take advantage of it. You Keith, know? that's exactly my mentality. Even if the show is not, you know, a hundred percent up to par, you're seeing Roger Daltrey live in front of you with a guitar playing Who songs. That's the way I look at it. I just find him to be so underrated as a vocalist. I think he's one of the greatest front men. Just. Uh, up there with well, all be- the greats. It's because of when he yeah, came out. Right. That 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 was an era of frontmen. You know that blonde yeah. man, oh that doll, yeah. like that Robert Plant frontman, fucking just swinging his mic and that powerful booming voice, man. Ah, oh. you know it, it's crazy because everything from the seventies was good. I mean, even disco, everything listen to it back now. But I mean, all these records that nobody heard of, like bands like Highway Robbery or Granicus and. uh you know, all these like you know, like a band like Dust, Richie Wise, you know, that uh, I don't even oh, know yeah. who that is. I don't Rich, know who that is. Kenny Richie Turner, Richie Wise, producer oh, from oh, Kiss. Oh, oh, oh. Richie, I'm yeah. like I'm hearing Kenny that Aronson alone. And Without Ramon. Kenny Turner, I don't put the two together. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like it just seems like every rock record that I discovered from the seventies is really good. I mean, yep. it's shit I hated back then, like Pablo Cruz, I'm like, this was really good. These musicians Dude, Pablo great. Cruz is fucking fantastic yacht rock. Pablo shit. Stanley? Come on. Yeah. Which one? Love will find a way. Come on, yeah. baby. We I had mean, a couple <laughs> listeners send us something on social media. It was like the Spanish Paul Stanley was like Pico Stanley or Pablo. Pablo, Pablo Chris, Chris, Pico Stanley, Jorge Simmons. <laughs> like, 
Th- these are the names they take on. Uh, yes. <laughs> this but you're absolutely right. So do. when you go, we, we were saying this, like when we think 70s, you're like, oh, the big bands of the 70s, the Eagles, Zeppelin, Kiss, Aerosmith, Fleetwood Mac. So, but you're forgetting the who in the 70s, the Stones in the 70s. Those huge 60 bands were even almost like a complete different band, but even bigger. In the yeah. 70s, right? Absolutely. And there Absolutely. are other artists like that from the 70s that you like. <clears throat> Elton John in the 70s. Other fucking incredible artists. What happened to music, man? This was our pop music back it, then. It all Elton died John, after Kurt know. Cobain died. That's all. Oh, stop it. I'm not getting into that. No, but I mean, I think he was really the last true rock star. Where, yeah, Gene like, Simmons. You, you, yeah. never knew, you never knew when, um, you, know, uh, I, you know, what he was up to is before social media, before the yep. internet. You know, I mean, you know, Axel, you know, uh, I mean, but Kurt, you know, he joined the 27 Club. He left that legacy. Yeah. Like, I was yeah. in college, and this asshole is the one who broke the news to me. Yeah, it's and my I didn't fault. believe him. I didn't believe him, and I turned were, on. Were you guys like, Nirvana fans? Uh, oh, hell yeah. You, still are. Yeah, we used to go to a, Harvard, We used to go to Harvard Square and go buy bootlegs of Pearl Jam, Nirvana, and stuff. We, we were into, like, the hair metal stuff as it came into the 90s. Right, so right. we go into college in 91. We meet. But the one thing connection we had is like, like we always, what was the song? Dreamweaver, Tom and I's eyes open up. Yeah, it's like, oh, Gary, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, kiss. Yeah, yeah. You like kiss too? You're the one? You're and the me one and person from that. But we both were into that same music. I got into country in, in, during the 90s. He got into hip hop, but we had the same stuff. And then, like, when Nirvana yeah, and all them yeah. bands broke out when we were in college. It was the great, like, there was just a classic album after classic album being released. All of a sudden, Versus is out. All of a sudden, Purple's out. All of a sudden, fucking, um, the uh, single soundtrack. The single soundtrack. Sound, sound Super Unknown comes out. Comes yeah. out. And, right. and Nirvana, In Utero comes out. Like, it's just one classic album after the next. We fucking loved it. We go yeah. to Harvard Square and we buy the CD singles. What's this fucking yellow piss lead better shit? What the fuck is that? Right. Buying all sorts of shit, CD singles. I mean, we loved it. And then and I that agree was really with- the last like glorious moments of rock and roll. And people put it down and like you missed out, man. That was seventies rock. I mean, that yep. was you know, Kurt Cobain didn't want to destroy hard rock or heavy metal. He you know, he's got Kiss on the Nevermind cover. I mean, they were all Kiss fans. That's right. I mean, he loved Celtic Frost. <laughs> it wasn't like it was the industry that plotted. They shot themselves in the foot. They, I'm, they, I always love this debate, totally, so I want to totally. hear it. So I, I still say, like, after the 90s, I, I, I'll say this to Tom. Tom tells me, he introduced me to a lot of new bands, and they are music. I'm just being an old curmudgeon. But to me, the 90s were the last of the great rock bands. The last great band is the Foo Fighters, and they came out in the 90s, technically. Right. Since then, a, as Gene says, you know who the members are of the Foo Fighters. Who the fuck is the bass player from Coldplay? Like, right. I don't fucking know who these people are. I don't know who these yeah. rock bands are. I know who Green Day is still. I know right. who they have. I like those bands survived that shit. They still okay. But I don't remember any of these new bands who the rock artists are. I mean, who's the fucking guy that used to be on The Voice? The fucking the good looking guy. What's his name? Adam uh, Levine. Oh, Adam and, Levine right? from fucking he's a, like um like a good looking guy, but he's just like a rock star because he is, but not his band. No, really? in his band. I don't Fuck know. Who no. Yeah. no, I mean, I, I, I'm not lying to you. You could play me a Creed song. I cannot tell you who the band is. Coldplay. Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, because you know, after the '90s is like that's it. I reverted back to everything. Dude, but there is a lot. There is a lot. You are my spirit stuff. animal. I love you. <laughs> but I do love I, bands like the Dandy Warhols. I love the Brian Jones. Yeah, I, I have them fish. too. I like yeah. them. I love Jellyfish. I thought they were great. Imperial Drag was with. An option. Oh yeah, yeah. They, I mean, the, the the bands are out there, but all those bands that you named, and this is where I this is where I come on both sides of streaming. I know some people hate it, some people love it. I, I love it because you just brought up a band like Imperial Drag or the Dandy Warhols. Like I don't have any of their physical stuff, but I'm like, shit. Keith just brought up the Dandy Warhols. I'm gonna fucking go listen to them on Spotify right now. Like it opens up a world of stuff for you to have that access. Like. You, you mentioned like Imperial Drag. You're like, fuck, I haven't heard those guys since forever. That was the great. That was the greatest '70s record made in the '90s. I in mean, the '90s, yeah. yeah, that was Argent. That was uh, you know a bad finger, and it yep. just rocks. I mean, yep. you know, it had Eric Dover in the band. I mean, his voice was incredible, and it was just you know, it was Jellyfish, 
electric and it was like yeah and it, like all their yeah. inspirations of the 70s really shine through that was probably my favorite record in the 90s you know wow i loved wow. radiohead too though uh, i mean um i can't deal with them yeah i just i remember just, creeping that was it and i fell off after that no, the one after you know the one um uh, oh the bends okay, plastic okay, fucking with the bends okay computer yeah, yeah, those were great records, you know, and and the bands were thinking in terms of records. They weren't thinking in terms of singles. Like exactly, yes, that's what happened to me in the eighties. I just got so sick of it after like eighty five. I'm like, I can't listen to this shit no more. I mean, yeah. I appreciate being on Hair Nation because a lot of those bands that went over my head, I learned, you know, I realized how great Cinderella is, and I learned yes, that, but at, way after the fact because I yep. was out of it. I went back to the Stones and the New York Dolls and Sweet and T-Rex and Slade and punk rock like the Dead Boys and the Pistols. That's yeah. where, you know, through the 90s. And then when, when I heard um, my friend bought the Bleach record and when I heard Negative Creep, I'm like, oh, my God. Yes. I bought yeah. the Bleach record. I was all ready for uh, Nevermind when it came out. It was like, yeah. yeah. And then when it got too popular, I kind of, you know, shifted away. Like with Iron Everybody. Everybody you know, after peace of mind, I kind of lost it with Iron Maiden too, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. But blue's yeah. the best song on that album, though. Which uh, one? Blue. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's my favorite. I mean, I, first Keith. of all, that part I, I I completely agree. But I'm curious to hear from you. Yeah. What do you think killed what's called hair metal? Um, just they were making shitty records. I mean, bingo. That's the know, right answer. Yeah, I mean, like. They, I yep. think all the debut records are great. Faster Pussycat, you know, all those bands. But I, I, listen, I'll, I'll, I'll take Faster Pussycat out of the equation because I thought all three of their records were good. But, you know, it became a formula instead yep. of like artists writing for what it's in their heart. It's just been like, OK, you need to write three of this. You need a, a ballad. You need a video. And it all became so homogenized that it was like, you know, you can't fool people. So, OK, I, all know. right. But then and wasn't hip hop doing the same thing? Hip hop's evolved. The styles always. Hip hop was. I'm just saying they followed a formula too. I, I'm just saying. I just feel. I love the Wu Tang. I mean the Wu Tang. Yes, is, Wu Tang forever. Uh, you know. I mean. You know. Th they were. You know. I mean. Run DMC. I mean. Come on. These yep. are innovators. Curtis yep. Blow. I mean. These guys were. You know. Took it to a whole different. Yeah, but level. Run DMC. By the time the '90s came along, they weren't selling shit. No, they you're were, right. They were. They, 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 were, they, they were considered but, like hair metal. Kind but they right. but, yes, but exactly. what, what saved Run DMC was this how smart they are. They they started collaborating with '90s hip hop stars to make themselves relevant to that new audience. But the mm. '90s hip hop stars weren't fucking laughing at them and calling their names and throwing darts at them in videos. They respected them. That's right. That's what country people do. They fucking they name drop all the old stars in their songs and try to take that and get the rub off of them. They love that shit. But hair metal got fucking shafted by both grunge and thrash. Both of them fucking just attacked hair metal and made them uncool, I feel, because yeah, yeah, that's yeah, how yeah. good the it, album it, it was. Slam the garage door on all, all those bands for a long time. You know, the only one yeah. I think that was unscathed was like a band like Bon Jovi. Because if they, they but he changed. Hair, they yeah. changed. And they went like unscathed throughout that whole thing. They went over to Europe where they were adored yep. and like you know what, let's chill out from America for a while. And, uh, you know, and they made better, they made better records than they were making back when it was happening for them. But, you know, a lot of the, you know, a lot of those later records from some of those hair metal bands, it, to me, you know, after the debut records, a lot of them were not as good. And it, and it became like there was a, a factory in Detroit that every band, uh, you know, with the, with the same hair, playing exactly. the same stars, it was just, yep. it got, got like pro wrestling for a little bit, you know? You, I mean? Yeah. So, but, I look at it like this. I think bands like uh, for me in that era, like I like Great White. I don't think all of a sudden they lost talent. I like Rat. I don't think they lost talent. But but they all got swallowed up by the shit bands. That's what I, I, they I all agree. Got swallowed and up and so they all got fucking shafted. Right. So like they were uncool all of a sudden. Yep. The, the Rats, the Dawkins, the Great Whites, the uh, you know bands of that caliber, even Cinderella. Cinderella. There's yeah, talent yeah. there. If you listen to their first couple albums, there's a fucking ton of great songs there. But the I think that's why Cinderella those Cinderella records were great. I mean, yeah. like Kid Row guys. I mean, those, those guys. Oh, I love great. them. Love yeah. them. Great friends of mine. I was in a band with Rachel. You know, we were doing punk rock stuff. I mean, and their third record, you know, they are the most sincerest, honest guys on the planet. They're not, you know, they, they, they you know, they made that Slave to the Grind record, like in the context of making an album. And then yeah. they did Subhuman Race. I mean, they're a band that could have like, you know, been unscathed throughout the whole thing. And, 
you know, they got swallowed up by it. Scotty was like telling me when they started the subhuman race tour, when they started slave to the grind, they were playing some stadium. They started that tour on a, at a bowling alley, but you know, people locally knew how these guys were legit. They were legit. You know I mean? But it was but look at them stuff. now. Their new album is fan fucking tastic. Yeah. I mean, that was really good. And they got a great singer there. That kid, Eric, he's, but, that's the, but, but you're making it, you're making a good point. All those bands that kind of got swallowed up. They were that good that they could rise above being swallowed up. You go back and listen to them now, you know, under lock and key, out of the cellar, like monkey, uh, monkey business, slave to the grind. Those albums still sound awesome now. Yes, Unfortunately, they, they got they got thrown in a because the of the songs. That's yeah. what I'm saying. That because then they got because bands like White Lion were f- sucking all the oxygen out of the room and and, and you know no well, offense. White Lion, about, I would all about the look. It was just how I they mean, yeah, but yeah, White I mean, Lion yeah. is a fucking is Led Zeppelin compared to half the fucking bands. No, I no offense know. on I, that fucking <laughs> Monsters of Rock cruise. There's Zeppelin compared to half. What do you mean? What, what do you mean? Wait, you're not a big fan of Tiger Tails and Ticketto? What's the matter with you? Well, fucking dude, we don't get him in trouble. I know because yeah, because he, he, he well, the, well, you know what? I want. I know. Dude, I'll do this after the show. We have no, our running on. gag about. No, but we've been talking. We've been talking for an hour, and I think it's a. This is what happens when we go on a rip. But I do want to ask you a couple it. questions yeah, about yeah. Ha- about Hair Nation and and Boneyard, okay? Sure. And, and uh, if I can I know, answer, I will. I, I was just going to say that's what I was just going to say. If you can answer me, you you do that. So I think it's funny how on Aussie's Boneyard, those are my two favorite channels. That it's satellite radio, and every once in a while, I'm like, oh my god, they're playing Plaster Caster. Wow. And I know you can't answer this, and if you can, I don't know, maybe you will. I, I, will I, try. I, I wish that that you had more freedom to do that. I'm not saying that you're going to play, you know, friggin', you know, Man of a Thousand Faces off the Gene <laughs> album on Ozzy's Boneyard. Why not? If it was but, up to me, I would. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. But but I lose the man. But I just, sometimes I'm like, God damn it. Like, I don't want to hear Detroit Rock City again. Get, play King of the Nighttime World. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it. <laughs> I get it. I mean, you know, I, but, but you know what? People, they, they, they spent a lot of time and effort into these surveys, and that's what people want to hear. And that's right. why they have these deep track channels now on the app where you could go Ozzy's Boneyard deep, and, and, and you know, where you'll hear like bands like Junkyard and Love Hate, or you'll hear like Junkyard. Plastic, I remember Plastic. them. And you it's funny. And, you know, it's, and it's funny you bring that up, Keith, because today at work, I usually listen to Spotify, but I, I because we were having you on i'm like i have i'm like i I don't really listen to serious that much at work and you're right all the app online channels like that's that's where you get your money's worth with a serious xm subscription for sure if you're a deep listener but you know yeah i mean you know i understand that people are driving or sitting in the cubicle you know and they want to have fun and they want to forget about being in the cubicle so you know i do what i can to make them forget they're in a cubicle or bring them back to things that i know that they could relate to you know because we're all human beings we all do the same shit you know what i mean yeah so, I mean, the music is kind of like an afterthought, but a lot of people, you know, I, I, I have friends of mine that can listen to Back in Black. We were talking about Zeppelin 4 on a loop. Yeah. Not me. When I'm, yeah. when I'm off the air, I'm not listening to any of that stuff. I'm just being honest with you. You yeah. know, I mean, uh, that's how I grew. I, I'll, I listen to Prince more than I listen to, you know, stuff. Yes. Else. But, I, but yes. I'm around it. You know what I mean? Oh. So it's, yes. But, yes. But, uh, Sly and the Family Stone, Parliament Funkadelic, Osmium. Yep. I mean, you know, these are, uh, you know. So I was, so so I want to hear Keith Roth on Groove. That's the channel I want to hear you on. Well, come on, play some of that. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. Being <laughs> on. But I, you know, I love being on Ozzy's Boneyard because that brings me back to yeah. being that kid on the train tracks and listening to Fast as a Shark by Accept, or you yeah. know, and and you know, they're all we're all in that same age demographic where we grew up in. And I don't feel like I'm old by any stretch of the imagination. I just think that. uh we grew up in way cooler times, man. And oh, that was fuck the yeah. bottom line, you know? Yeah. I mean, hey, so one quick one, I'm going to give you a, ni- a nice little layup. Diary of a Madman or Blizzard of Oz? That's a really great question. You know, I saw Ozzy on, uh, when Diary came out, I saw them him four times with Randy. Oh, Shut I saw, the fuck. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, the first time I saw them um, was at the Palladium in New York City. on New York, New York yeah. Yeah. And it was a, I think it was a Saturday night and there was two shows. There was a five 30 and a nine 30. So we bought tickets for the five 30. Like, man, our parents won't even know that we went to the show. We could walk down to 14th, be home by 11. No big deal. And when we saw, you know, motorhead and Ozzy play together, 
I'm like, I don't give a fuck if I'm grounded for a year. <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going to the second show. And my friend's like, I'm right there. And the third guy we were with is like, I'm going to get in trouble. I'm like, well, go home. And he wouldn't walk up to the garden by himself. So he wound up going to the show. I got home. My parents were sleeping, man. They didn't even know I was, you know, whatever. But it was so incredible. And, you know, obviously, there's really nothing on YouTube because I look all the time. But yeah, yeah. Motorhead. And I was reading about him in Krang magazine and they came out and I felt like I was violated in the best <laughs> way possible. They were so fucking amazing. And then yeah. Ozzy with Randy and Rudy and Tommy oh. Aldridge. I, I had to see that second show. The first show we had like 12th row. The second show we bought like, and you could scalp tickets at that point for like 20 bucks, 25 yeah. bucks Oof. to sit all the way upstairs. Cause the tickets were like $9, $8. And I, it was well worth it. But um, so to answer your question, I probably listen to Diary more than I do listen to Blizzard. Cool, cool. Interesting. But I, I think Interesting. that they're. I think they're like a double album, really. Like, Heaven yeah, and a lot Mob of people Rules. say that. Yep. Yeah, Heaven and Hell and Mob Rules is like that with me too because I think they're both amazing. So it's like, what great competition, right? Ozzy with Blizzard and Diary and Sabbath with Heaven and Hell and Mob Rules. I mean, you know, Van Halen, right? With uh, yeah, Smile and Fifty One Fifty. You know, the competition yeah. is great. Keith, I want to ask you one question. We'll, we'll, we'll let you go. It's just, we're just having a blast here. So I, I do want to ask you a question about your band, The Dictators. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Um, I texted Zeus today. So Zeus and I are massive Seinfeld fans. Okay. You guys have a song called Festivus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I need to know the story behind this. That, that was a song that Andy wrote, and obviously yeah. he's a big Seinfeld guy. Yeah. Uh, you know, he said, I got this great song Festivus and we recorded it and it's hysterical. You know, it's I mean, fucking first of all, I love like the song is it kicks ass. Like I'm not a huge punk guy, but if the but if the song has like a melody or something, a hook, I'm listening to it. And I'm like, and then I just hear they're talking about Festivus and it's, <laughs> it's, it's it, I'm like, Zeus, you have to hear this. Like, this is amazing. Like what a small world. Well, the weird thing about the dictators is like, you know, uh, the ironic thing that I'm in the band is, you know, I grew up in the Bronx. And yep. Manitoba and, and uh, Scott Kempner, who just passed away, they went to kindergarten with my brother. And I, oh, wow. I, and so I got to know them throughout. The, they were never, I mean, they get credited a lot for starting punk rock because their first album came out in 75 before the yep. Ramones. And, yep. and, and they toured with Kiss, as you know, back in 78. Uh, the Dictators opened for Kiss. Yep. So I was always a fan. I think Gold Girl Crazy is one of my favorite records ever. But, um, you know, playing in that band specifically, you know, I, that first album, I, I mean, if you love Kiss and you love, you know, great, I mean, you got Ross the Boss, who's a guitar legend in the band. It's like, yep. you know, you're around that guy. I mean, he's right there, upper echelon of, you know, you know, so it's a phenomenal band. But um, Festivus, yes. Uh, yeah. It's definitely inspired from Seinfeld. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. So w w one more thing, and I'll, and I'll, I'll go pass over to Zeus. So speaking of punk rock and serious. So again, I'm not a huge punk rock fan. So forgive my ignorance. No, no worries. D does, does serious have a, a, a punk rock? Like if you, if you're a punk fan, can you listen to it on Sirius XM? Is there, is, I mean, I know they have like faction faction. I was just going to say faction is on there. You got Marky Ramone show. I mean, yeah. Like, okay. But I feel like faction Steven dives into that a little bit, you know. Yeah, there was I feel a like punk faction. channel, and uh, you know there was a punk channel. There was a song that we recorded with David Johansson. It used to get played all the time. So yeah, I wish, I wish it was still going because I remember. I remember when the channels changed a little bit. I remember like Aussie's Boneyard used to be Boneyard, right? And then there used to be a channel. I think it was called Buzzsaw. I think that's that became Liquid Metal. I think I or was that on, became I was on Buzzsaw, and then when yeah, okay the company, when the companies merged. There was all these great channels and they had to like, you know, absorb each other. Yeah. Absorb yeah. each other. So it's like, all right, we're going to use Boneyard and Buzzsaw. Buzzsaw was such a great channel because, you know, you can hear Skinner into the Runaways, into, yes. Sexton, into, uh, you know, Priest, like Victim of Changes. I mean, there was a lot of yeah. great stuff on there. Um, awesome. But yeah, and Boneyard. And then when Ozzy and Ozzy's unbelievable, they have a, they're very hands on with the channel, like him and Sharon. Then yeah. really. Oh, yeah, I'm sure that's I'm I'm sure that's why we hear Ozzy and Black Sabbath all the time on it. Every hour you'll hear yeah. Ozzy and Black Sabbath it's, with exactly. Ozzy. Exactly. So. Yep. You better play my Ozzy shit or I'm gonna fucking go down and rip your enemies out. <laughs> no, no. I mean I'll tell you, they're both really awesome people. Of yeah. course I am. I'll and fucking they... rip your ass rather than you and shove it down your fucking throat. <laughs> 
<laughs> One of the funniest things is a couple of years ago, uh, I did my, you know, in the middle of COVID, I, I hosted a New Year's Eve party and I was doing it from my basement where, you know, my studio's down there. So I was Zooming with everybody. And uh, it was just funny to have Ozzy and Sharon. I mean, yeah. well, here's my basement where like, you know, how, how many years, you know, we spent playing Sabbath songs or whatever. And it's like, there's Ozzy on my computer, like looking at my basement, which I thought Fuck was it. hysterical. Awesome. But I fucking love him. I fucking awesome. love Ozzy all yeah. the way through. You like man. crack cocaine? You like the new song with Billy Morrison? I do. You know what? I, I mean, uh, somehow he is the luckiest motherfucker. He just, he, he, I was just going to say that he stumbles into all these talented people exactly. and they know exactly what they need to get from him. Yep. Put out this incredible music. Yeah. Because I mean, just the talent that's been around him all these years, especially the early albums, you know, it's just God bless him. I love him. And even Sharon, because no matter what, you know, he wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have all this Aussie shit if it wasn't for her hard work either. It's true. So I got to give true. her credit. So yeah, absolutely, you know, absolutely. She I, she kept him uh, on the path, and he and he gave us those last two records. He did are unbelievable, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. I thought they were phenomenal, and Andrew Watt did a phenomenal job on those records, and the songs are great, and the playing's great, and you know, I, I you know, I hope he um, I hope he does these last couple shows in Birmingham and. Uh, you know, if you've been around the guy, he's really a sweetheart, man. He's just that's what I, yeah, he that's is what like the um. I think of him as like the Dolly Parton of hard rock. Like everybody, everybody loves, everybody loves Dolly. Nobody yeah. says anything bad. About, I think the same thing with Ozzy. I think everybody loves him. Yeah, he's like how can you not? He's lovable. You know, yeah, I mean, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I remember uh, the gig at Jones Beach when uh, Stone Sour and like, uh, can you interview Ozzy before he goes on? I'm like, absolutely. So, like, just make it, like, five or six minutes because, you know, he's going on in 10, whatever. And we go in there and we're talking, you know, the, the same stuff, which he's probably so burnt out of hearing. You know, where's the, how's the tour going? And then we start talking about the Beatles. And next thing you know, he's, like, it's showtime. <laughs> so fucking excited to talk about, like, the Revolver record. And it was like he's a fan. Like, yeah. yeah he loves you know, and I'll say, ever get him on your show, talk about the Beatles. You'll have him here for four hours. You know, I would love to. And that's the thing that we find about this show, Keith. We'll get wrestlers, actors, comedians, rock guys. We had your buddies from Skid Row on just to talk about Kiss. The the joy that people get to just have that release, just gush to talk about Kiss. It's like like none other. You can't explain it, man. Yeah, it's. It's just like you said, how Ozzy is like, yeah, the tour's fucking great, you know? I don't right. know what accent that was. I fucking can't do it, Ozzy. Was. But but then you talk to him about the Beatles, and all of a sudden he's like a little child. I want to talk. There's my release. That's what we get with people when we get to talk about Kiss. There's just yeah. something about them. It's a band like no other, that you yeah. have this passion, this love, and you can laugh and tell these stories. What other band can you like? What was your favorite costume? Yeah. What was your favorite yeah. fucking makeup? Who's yeah. your favorite, you know, ever, yeah. you know, right. no, but no right. other band is like this. Really? I mean, I, you know, I love them up to dynasty. I mean, you know, yep. I, I, you know, I, and then I got lost for a while, but I, I'll never, you know, after same dynasty, here, a lot of know, people did. Yeah. But then I came home one night, it was like three o'clock in the morning, probably coming back from a keg party and I'm Woo-hoo! sitting in the basement watching MTV and they played. I love it loud. Oh, you know, I, that you video! Saw oh, that my. on MTV, the video. Really, I saw it on MTV, and I was blown away. I'm like, wait a minute, man, Kiss is back. Yep. So when I was at, uh, you know, my record shopping list because I'd buy three or four records a week. I'm like, I got to get the new kit, and that cover was so fucking amazing. The yep. the yep. night, the blue cover, and I'm like, I got to buy this, and I loved it because you know the music scene was changing. You know, bands like Priest and Maiden were breaking through, yep. and here they are, kind of like. Kiss is back. You know, they, they, they changed their sound, but it's still Kiss. And that Creatures record got me back. And then um, there was a Woolworths in my neck of the woods. And oh, I yeah. Heard about the Elder record. I always wanted to hear the Elder because, you know, Lou Reed, I love the Velvet Underground, was writing with Kiss. Yep. And Ezra. Yep. I never buy this. But in Woolworths, it was like Gene and Peter's records were a dollar. The Elder was a dollar. And I'm like, oh, I can't wait. And I, I love the Elder. It's a guilty pleasure. Same here. Yeah, I yeah. same here, brother. I, I I like some of it. I tolerate some. Some of it's really good. Other some of it's like ah, just a ah. boy. I mean, oh. have, you ever, have you ever heard the pretty things? Like you were talking about the Who before, yeah, like Quatina and Tommy. 
they made they made their first rock opera before the Who did, and it was called SF Sorrow, and it was you know it predates the Who. I, I, I definitely Townsend was inspired by it, but Kiss. I've talked uh, you know not to name drop, but I've talked to Gene about SF Sorrow. Yeah, no doubt they when they wrote up you know just a boy was inspired by the Pretty Things SF Sorrow, and that's a great wow. fucking record. You wow. will love it. you'll love it. And realize it came out a year before Tommy. So it's wow. it's a whole story to it, and it's great. Wow. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, it's funny that you say that because Tom and I tell the same story. I Like, I dropped off after Dynasty. Yeah. I didn't get back into him until my cousin was playing Animal Eyes Live in 85 at his house. I'm like, the fuck is this? And he's like, this is Kiss. Right. Like, they're still right. around? And I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. And I then I went back. Wasp. I saw them at Wasp on that tour, right? And uh wow. Um, you know, I, I, you know, one of, one of the, uh, I was at Soundcheck when they played the pony, when they did yep. a couple of club gigs for, uh, Hot in the Shade. I saw, you know, but the best I've ever saw Kiss, uh, you know, was when the, the 96 tour at the Garden. Oh, the reunion. The reunion. Yeah. That was the first I mean, time I saw him. Yeah. And it, I was, I left there, like, I, I was so fucking excited when they we went all were. Yep. Yeah, we all were. Yep. And D-Generation Open, who are friends of mine, you know, yep. see, and, I was just like, man, I felt like I was 11 years old again. And they were yep. perfect. You know, there was just absolutely, perf- they were probably as good as, as they were in the seventies at that point, you know, agreed. Or, yep. At least I felt that way, you know? Yep. Yeah. Agreed. Wow. Perfect. That's a perfect way to wrap it up. Keith, this has been unbelievable. We could be talking to you fucking all night, probably. Yep. Oh yeah. Uh, no, uh, but, I mean, you know what? When you said an hour, I'm like, really? I thought yeah. it was up to 10 minutes. It was great. I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I- but but I tell you, this has been a thrill. I've been a fan of you for years, so it's been a pleasure for me personally to meet you, shoot the shit about Kiss, Rock, you name it, everything. He is Keith Roth. Keith, tell everybody where they can find you if for some reason they don't know where to find you. Well, you can hear me uh, every fucking day on uh, Sirius XM from noon to 6 Eastern time on Hair Nation Channel 39, from 6 to midnight on Ozzy's Boneyard Channel 38, and then, of course, uh, working with my good friend David Johansson, from the New York Dolls, we do uh, his Mansion of Fun show together Wednesdays at midnight on the Spectrum. And, uh, you know, come out, see the Dictators, Frankenstein, the new Dictators records coming out in May. We're going on tour with the Damned, and uh, we made a really cool record, you know. Nice. Awesome. Here's my shameless self promo. No. Good for you, man. Love it, man. He is Keith Roth. Keith, thank you so much. This has been a blast. Good oh, luck, buddy. Thank you, you so much. Great, man. I love you guys. You guys are thank awesome. Thank you. Keep on keeping on. You guys are brilliant. Thanks, man. Tom, that was Keith Roth. What did you think? Oh, my God. We covered everything. I mean, we went from Kiss, hair metal, grunge, The Who, Zeppelin, touring, childhood things. that we la- the One of the funniest things that just made me laugh out loud is when we brought up Who's Next. And what, so- what was the first song he brought up? Oh, of course, my wife. I just, my I, burst, wife. I just burst out laughing. And then he, then he was talking about John Whistle. It was it was great. We 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 covered everything. I love those kind of stream of consciousness conversations with just three rock nerds talking about everything that we love. How about the Richie Blackmore A story? Oh my god! The car in the kitchen <laughs> with the shower curtain. Yeah, I'm just doing some reconstruction. He pulls it back. His fucking car is there. <laughs> oh fuck! I missed the garage by about forty feet. Fuck. Oh, Keith, right. Keith was a blast though, man. If you guys are serious XM subscribers, I'm sure you, you know him. He's always on Bo- Boneyard and Hair Nation. He's a friggin' riot, huge rock fan, huge kiss fan, punk fan, everything. Tons of fun. And, uh, he's the type of guy we'll have him back on again. We had a ton of fun with him. So you'll totally. see him back here soon enough. The great Keith Roth. Tom, what we do next is we go to question of the week. Yeah, and our question of the week is sponsored by the great Shout It Out Loudcast Hall of Famer, Tony the Taxman Barone of abcpainc.com. By the time you hear this, it's going to be almost April, or it might be April by the time you hear this. And tax season is coming to a close here. He's your man. Doesn't matter which of the 50 states you live in, he can take care of all of your tax preparation needs, your individual tax needs, estate tax needs, business And Zeus and I can speak from experience. He took care of us last year, and he's in the process of taking care of us right now. He is the man. Go to his website, abcpainc.com. There's links there where you can send him messages. You can give him a call. You can research everything he has to offer for you. He's the best, responsive, badass. He's awesome. Plus, he's a huge fan of 
Avenge Sevenfold, Tool, and of course, Kiss and Shout It Out Loudcast. So check them out, Tony the Taxman. And our question of the week comes from a Facebook DM from Tracy Law. Greetings, Tom and Zeus. I thought of a question I'd like to get you guys' thoughts on. Back in the 70s and 80s, it was virtually impossible to see the members of KISS out of their makeup. Do you remember the first time that you saw them without it? I remember seeing a picture of Paul with Donna Dixon, and I was shocked to see his face. I don't think I actually saw Gene until the Lick It Up album. I saw Ace when he left the band and started Freely's Comet, and for the life of me, I can't remember the first time I saw Peter without his makeup. Just wondering what you guys remembered about seeing them back then without makeup. So, Peter, I I bought, uh, when I had vinyls when I was, like, a teenager, Let Me Rock You. I think that's the first time I saw him. Like, he has a beard? And he looked like Doug Keens from the Bruins yeah, back he's then. Wet coming out of a bathtub or whatever the <laughs> fucking terrible album cover. Yeah, so that one. Uh, I remember Ace, the first time I saw him was in one of those magazines. Do you remember that photo of him on top of those speakers and he had that like Z guitar? Oh, yeah. Hanging yeah. on the speakers. That was the first time I saw what he looked like. Okay. And then Paul and Gene is when I was in Detroit, visited my cousins and they put on and he had on Animalized Live. And I was like, who the fuck is that? Yep. And then he pointed out that was, you know, Gene and Paul. That's Kiss. That's the first time I saw them. Okay, for me, the first time I remember seeing Paul and Gene and and then, of course, Vinny and Eric uh, is when my cousin for Christmas got me the cassette of Lick It Up. And I remember he and I remember he handed this to me. And he's like, oh, it's a new Kiss album. I go, no, it isn't because I didn't know. I, I didn't yeah. know about the, the unmasking on MTV. I didn't see any of that. I was like nine, whatever, nine years old, 10 years old. Um, and I was like, what the fuck is this? I was like, that's I, of course, you know, Gene with the tongue. And I was like, OK, that's weird. The, the Peter and Ace, it was similar to you, Zeus. It was the, it was just the rock magazines. It was like Hit Parader, Circus. I truly don't remember the first time I saw Peter. I do remember Ace. And I think it was probably his first album, the, you know, Freely's Comet, Second Sighting or whatever, and just seeing a picture like that. I was like, oh, God damn, that boy needs makeup. Like, woof. <laughs> Peter, Chris, I, I don't remember, but yeah, I, I do wish that the first time I saw them was that MTV unmasking with JJ Jackson, because that would have been kind of cool. But instead, it was my cousin handed me the cassette, and I was like, Ugh, what the hell is this? But um, yeah, that's a great question, Tracy. I'd like to see what other people's experiences are with uh, discovering them without makeup, too. So appreciate that very much. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, Tom, where can people find us? Always go to our website, shoutitoutloudcast.com. That's where you can find everything you would want to know about us in the show, all the episodes. All the Shout It Out Loudcast episodes, Dorm Damage, Album Review Crew, Zeppelin Chronicles. Everything is there. You can comment everything. And you can also click on links to all of our superb guests that we've had on there. It will take you to their social media and their websites. You can also click on links for our Amazon shopping page, our Shout It Out Loudcast merch, our Patreon links, our social media links, everything. Check it out. That's there. And also, you will be able to keep track of the brackets and the polls. If you're interested on in how to do that, when you get to our shoutoutloudcast.com landing page, click on the big Shout It Out Loudcast logo, and then you'll see a header at the top, March Madness. Click on that. You'll be able to keep track of everything. I'll be putting the polls there so everybody can keep track of updated brackets. So please do that. And, of course, our social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Please send us emails, shoutoutloudcast at gmail.com. If you want to be part of our question of the week, please use any of those formats, direct messages on social media or our email. And we always like to say that we are a proud member of the Pantheon podcast network of shows. Yeah, Tom, people can DM us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We're now on threads, TikTok, any social media company out there that you probably are part of. You'll find us. Uh, please make sure you check out Tom's Spotify playlist that he's created. We really appreciate that. And if you could subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll be seeing the, the new Ace video on there. I'll be putting more videos on there uh, besides our just episode posts. So please subscribe to us. You'll never know what is going to be popping up there sooner or later. Give us one of those five-star child reviews on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you can give reviews. It's greatly appreciated, and we... Uh, and we always read them and give you a shout out on the air. I like to repeat the actual website, shout it out loudcast 
uh, com. Shout it out loudcast.com. There you can see our friends of the, of Shout Out Loudcast page. People like the gentleman you just heard, his photo will be up. Uh, we've had Tuck Smith on recently. The Skid Row guys who are in the news again. Uh, Britt Lightning, Ace Fraley. We've had a bunch of people on there recently. Check them out. They're there. Our Amazon stores there. And of course, our Shout It Out Loud cast merch, where you can check out our new Ace Cult shirt that I think you guys are really going to like, thanks to uh, Hall of Famer Jeff Trot. So, guys, thank you very much. And, Tom, what we like to do is end on famous last words. Do you have any? I do. The things are complicating. My love is in her hands. And there's no more waiting. She understands. It's so sad living at home, far from the city, in the midnight fun. It's so bad going to school, so far from me, and the dirty things that we do. Keith Roth, Kiss Army, Loudcasters, Tom, thank you. Keith Roth, what a blast. Thanks so much for hanging with us. Appreciate it. Loudcasters, Patreons, everybody out there, you guys rock. Let's have some fun with this tournament. Let's get some arguments going, as always. Zeus, as always, my friend, thank you. Peace out, Girl Scout. Hit the music. What I'd like now is for all you fat, out of shape, worldwide kiss cards to keep the noise down while I show your ladies what a real sexy man looks like. Listen, all you people out there sitting on rented furniture, settle down. Cut the music. Anybody see Richie? Anybody know why Richie did Bobby Lupo?